Well, good evening, Hearth and Homies. Tonight's compilation is The Adventures of the Falcon. This show premiered on the Blue Network in 1943. It will continue on NBC and the Mutual Broadcasting System until 1954. It's based on the character created by writer Drexel Drake, which was a pseudonym for Charles H. Huff. The Falcon is a freelance investigator, also known as Michael Waring. Now, tonight's episode star Les Damon as the Falcon, and these would be from 1950 to 1953, these episodes. And for all you organ lovers out there, don't worry. Bob Hamilton does a fantastic job on the organ for this show. Now, this show was based on a popular movie series released by RKO Radio Pictures in the early 1940s. We've taken this classic old-time radio show and paired it with some beautiful imagery to bring you the OTR Visual Radio for a unique old-time radio viewing experience. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to join the Johnny Dollar Club. That's right, you can support Hearth at Home Entertainment for only a dollar a month. Just like Johnny in those classic early episodes, you can flip us a dollar. Just click the links down below to find out how. So thanks so much. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Peggy. I'm glad you called. I'll have to ask for a rain check, Angel. I'm all tied up. Mm-hmm. An actor friend of mine just bought himself a gun, and the way it looks now, he figures to make a big hit. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Disappearing Doll. And now, The Case of the Disappearing Doll. It's Wednesday evening in New York. And in a small furnished room on Manhattan's east side, a gentleman named Carl Hoffman glares at an old clock as if commanding it to stop. And when it continues to ignore Mr. Hoffman's wishes, he holds off and makes known his displeasure. Hey, take it easy, Carl. Don't tell me to take it easy, Sheppy. Well, you went and busted the clock. That's not all I'm going to bust either. Where's Janet? Give her a chance, Carl. She'll show. When? She was due here an hour ago. Well, maybe she got tied up with that jerk, Harry Jensen. That's still no excuse. I told her a dozen... Get that. Yeah, I'll get it. Just a second. Hello, Sheppy. Oh, you're just in time, Janet. What's the matter? Carl, he's blowing his top. Don't worry about it. It'll do him good. That you, Janet? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? Working. You were due here at eight. There were what they call extenuating circumstances. You out with Harry Jensen? Uh Uh-huh. How'd you make out? Well, he's loosening up a little. But... He still wouldn't kick through with the information. Well, that's a nice how do you do. Well, if you think you can do better... Maybe I can. All right, take it easy, Carl. You too, Janet. Where does he get off bawling me out? How long have I had to work on Harry? Look, we know it's only been a week, but time is getting short. Vince Dario will be here tomorrow. Who? Vince Dario. Carl's bringing him in from Toledo for this. Why? Because he's the best man in the business, that's why. And Vince isn't the kind of a guy who'll hang around if we can't promise him action. Well, I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, sure she is, Carl. Now, why don't you two just kiss and make up? No... All right, I'm sorry, Janet. Forget it, honey. Come here, baby. <laughs> uh, don't mind me, folks. Uh, grab yourself a walk, Shepard. Come on, fellas, break it up. Huh? We got work to do. He's right, sweetheart. When do you think you'll have something to report from that Harry Jensen character? Well, he wanted to see me later tonight. Well, maybe tonight's the night. Maybe. How about it, Janet? You know, I think if you got him good and plastered, he might start talking. That's never been a problem with Harry. The tough thing is to make him quit. Well, get him started in the right direction, baby. And when he stops, we'll be on easy street. Don't be such a sissy. Who's a sissy? You are. Yeah? Now, let me show you something. Give me that bottle. Now, Harry, do you think you should? Watch. Yep. Well, 
well, well, well. <laughs> How's that? Oh, darling, you're terrific. Hey, you want to know something, Janet? What? Hey, you're pretty terrific, too. I'm, I'm crazy about you, baby. Crazy enough to marry me? Say the word and we'll do it like that. Don't tempt me, Harry. <laughs> I mean it. So do I. <clears throat> what did we live on? What will we live on? What's the matter with me? I make good dough. Eighty bucks a week. <laughs> Is that anything to sneeze at? Oh, no, that's wonderful, darling. Yeah, I'm top man with the outfit. Who do you think makes all the important deliveries? Who? Me, that's who. Go on. Don't believe me, huh? Ever hear of the McGill Company? Yeah. Well, they got a payroll of 80,000 bucks a week, and I'm the guy who brings it to them. When? Huh? When do you bring it to them? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. We're not supposed to tell. And you claim you love me. I do, then sweetheart. Then tell me. Tell me when you're going to deliver the McGill payroll. Now, what difference does that make? Think I could marry a man who didn't trust me? <laughs> Say, Janet. What? Well, ain't, ain't, it, ain't it kind of stuffy in here? No. I... I feel awful warm. You know, I, I, I bet I could just go to sleep. I, don't you pass out on me? <laughs> oh, don't, don't, Janet. I, I, I'm not about. Harry, <laughs> Harry, the McGill payroll. When do you deliver it? Yeah, Friday. Friday at two. Yeah, what do you want? I'm looking for Carl Hoffman. Well, who are you? All right, Sheppy, let him in. Hiya, Vince. Hello, Hoffman. Sheppy, Vince Dario. Glad to know you. Thanks. When'd you get in, Vince? About 20 minutes ago. You couldn't have timed it better. Got something hot? Mm-hmm. Sheppy, here are the McGill Company. The people who make all those plumbing fixtures? That's right. Don't tell me you're figuring on knocking them off. That's what I'm figuring on. I wish you would have told me that in your letter. Why? Because I wouldn't have wasted my time coming to New York. Let him go, Carl. Shut up, Sheppy. Now, before you make up your mind, Vince, maybe you ought to hear the deal. There's no deal where you have to walk into a plant like McGill's. We don't have to walk in. We grab on the outside. Come again? The messenger who delivers the payroll is a character named Harry Jensen. We know to the minute what time he'll get to the factory. Now, are you interested? I'm still here. They're tearing up the street in front of the place, so he has to park his bus a block away. Now, he'll come down Remsen Street. That's where you and I take over. Sheppy will be covering the street with a Thompson from a vacant room across the way. Sounds all right. It gets better as it goes along. Now, we give the dough to Janet. Wait a second. Who's Janet? A girlfriend of mine. I don't like it, Hoffman. What's the matter now? I don't like any caper where a babe is involved. You don't know this, babe. How do you think we find out when they're going to deliver the payroll? Oh. Yeah. She's a real stylish kid. What's her last name? Halsey. Wait till you meet her. I'd like to very much. It's all up to you, Vince. What do you say? We got the time, the place, and a girl. What more can a fella ask? How does she handle, Janet? All right, I guess. You guess? Well, I never did like driving in this kind of weather. Don't be silly, baby. It's going to make things a lot easier all around. Right, Vince? Sure, the rain will keep them off the streets. Whoa, sweetheart. Wait a minute. Right here will be fine. Should I shut her off? I'll keep her running. And remember, when you start off again, go right into second and don't see to too much gas. Yeah, I got it. What time is it, Vince? Uh, make it a couple of minutes to two. Mm-hmm. You see Sheppy across the street? I think so. Well, that does it. Are you sure you know what to do, Janet? Yeah, as soon as I get the bag, I head straight for my apartment. That's right. Don't hang around no matter what. We'll all be over to your place by nine to divvy up. Supposing you aren't. Don't give it a thought, sweetheart. It'll take more than... What? Is that our friend, Harry? Well, on the corner. Yeah, that's him. All right, Vince. Here's where we go to work. Lots of luck, honey. Thanks, baby. Give me a cigarette. Yeah. Where's that lighter you're so proud of? Oh, what do you know? It works. Here he comes. Hey, buddy. Me? Yeah. Can you tell us where Tremont Avenue is? Oh, well, uh, you're on the wrong side of town, mister. 
I'll tell you what you better do. No, I'll tell you what you better do. Don't make a move, bud. Not even a teeny one. Hey, what is this? Just what it looks like. Pass that grip to my friend. Go on. Sorry, pal. You know how it is. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, that's all right, mister. I got a good memory for faces. I won't forget you. In that case, let me give you something else to remember me, boss. <laughs> Is it? That should be up enough. Hello, Carl. Vince. Hi. Oh. Rough like clockwork, didn't it? Yeah. Where's Janet? She ain't here. Huh? What? No, no, no. I was the first one in. It's lucky I had a key to her place, huh? And you're lucky I don't have a suspicious mind. Well, I have. Did she phone in? Uh-uh. You told her to come straight here, didn't you, Carl? Yeah. Well, you don't think she had an accident, do you? No, no, no. We would have heard about it. I had the radio in the car tuned to the police calls. What if the cops snapped her? You kidding? There was nobody within miles of her. After you chucked the bag into her car, she took off. She'll show up, Vince. She better. She's got all the dough. Just what are you getting at? You told me yourself she's a very smart girl. Women who are beautiful shouldn't be brainy. Meaning? I think we got a double cross. You're nuts. I'll leave it to Sheppy. No, no, no. Janet wouldn't do that, Vince. Why not? Well, well, because she never did it before. Did she it. ever have 80 grand before? Look, what are you worried about? It isn't even 9 o'clock. Well, supposing she doesn't show by 9. Then I'll start looking for her. And if she isn't dead when I find her, she'll wish to heaven she was. Hey. You guys got a butt. I'm fresh out. There's a pack in my coat pocket, Sheppy. Thanks. Carl, you wouldn't have anything else in that pocket. Like what, Vince? Like 80 grand. Pardon me for pointing, but it's 20 after 9. Your girlfriend hasn't shown up yet. So? So I think we ought to start looking for her. Suppose she comes back in the meantime. You can always leave her note. No, no. I think one of us ought to hang around here. Who, for instance? Why, do you want to? Maybe I better. Okay, you wait here. Sheppy, you cover the east side. You know the places Janet likes. I got you. What are you going to do, Hoffman? I got an angle I want to try. Like what? Never mind. But if Janet's tossing us a curve, I think I know the one guy who can throw her out at home. I'll let you know how I make out. Yeah? I'd like to see Mike Waring, the Falcon, please. You are now. Oh, well, uh, my name's Carl Hoffman. Yeah? Uh, can I come in? Oh, sorry. Thanks. Sit down. Much obliged. Now, what's on your mind? Well, I'm looking for a girl. Aren't we all? No, I mean, this is a special one. Her name is Janet Halsey. Janet Halsey? Yeah. She's my girlfriend. Well, maybe we better take this from the beginning. Well... Janet and I were supposed to be married next Sunday. So I opened up a joint account for us at the bank. How big? $2,000. And she skipped? Mm Mm-hmm. This morning. She lived at the Brighton Towers. How do you know she didn't meet with an accident? Well, she's done the same thing before. Oh, she has? Yeah. She served three years in the women's penitentiary under the name of Lois Hart. She got out in 48. How come you trusted her with your money? Well, you know how it is, Waring. You always hope that this time it's going to be different. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do, Hoffman. As you say, the first problem is to locate the girl. Yeah, and the moment you do, will you give me a call? I'll be waiting at the Brighton. Brighton? Didn't you say that's where your girlfriend lived? Yeah. I'm using her apartment to operate from. Uh-huh. You see, I wouldn't want to miss her if she came back. Well, I guess that does it, Falcon. I'll be waiting for your call. to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Carl Hoffman recruited Mike Waring in his search for Janet Halsey. And now as we find Mike, he is making a tour of some of the shadier spots on New York's 3rd Avenue. You're looking for someone, mister? As a matter of fact, I am. Falcon. Hello, Joey. A long time no see, pal. What can I do for you, Mike? Well, you're a man who knows all the wrong people. Ever hear of a girl named Janet Halsey? Huh? Huh? We seem to have an audience. Yeah, and I like your act, mister. 
Only I missed the last line. Would you mind repeating it? Now cut it out, Sheppy. This is Mike Wern. I don't give a rap who he is. What do you want with Janet Halsey? I don't think that's any of your business. All right. Suppose we take a little walk outside. No, thanks. It's too hot. That's all right. I got something in my pocket to chill you off. Now take it easy, Let's Sheppy. keep out of this, Joe. What do you say, Waring? I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. No. So start walking. I'm sorry, Mike. It's all right, Joey. All in a day's work. Quit gabbing. Come on, I haven't got all day. Look, if you'd like to put this off or something... I'll be a wise guy. Okay, where do we go from here? Let's try that alley. Now, look, You heard me. All right, hold it. This is fine. Now, let's pick up where we left off. What do you want with Janet? It's a long story, Sheppy. It's okay, you're not going anywhere. Oh, I might surprise you. Here we go. Get that hand out of your Let pocket. Let go or I'll walk. Oh. Oh. All right, punk, on your feet. Let me alone. I said on your feet. Why are you so interested in Janet Halsey? Maybe I'm looking for her, too. Maybe, and then again, maybe you know where she is. No. Where can I find her? I got no idea. Well, get one. Let me go. Come on, Shep, you can keep this up all night. <laughs> Have you been to the Brighton Towers? No, but someone else hasn't. She wasn't there. Well, you might... You might try the Riverdale. Apartment 4 e. Well, thanks a lot, fella. You've been a great help. Let's do it again sometime. Who is it? Carol. Where's Sheppy, Vince? Out looking. Did he phone in? No, I guess he had nothing to report. How did you make out? Not so hot. I guess that leaves me up the well-known creek. What are you griping about? We're all in the same boat. Yeah, but I didn't bring Janet into the act. You did, Hoffman. Okay, and I'll find her. I don't see him making any progress. Maybe not, but I hired somebody who will. Who? A fellow named Mike Waring. A private dick? That's right. What's the idea? You going off your trolley? Relax, will you, Vince? I gave him a song in dance about wanting to find Janet. This guy wearing has plenty of contact. Well, I don't like it. You, the boy, was belly aching that I wasn't doing anything. You didn't have to go that far. No, how far would you go for 80 grand? Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. That must be Sheppy. I'll take it. Yeah, what do you want? I beg your pardon. I must have the wrong number. Wait a minute. Is that you, Janet? Hello. Hello. What's the trouble? I think that was Janet. You're imagining things. Don't tell me. I'd recognize her voice anywhere. What made her call and then hang up? You know something, Vince? That's just what I was wondering. I'll be back in an hour. Hello. Hello, is this Janet Halsey's apartment? Yeah. Carl Hoffman there. Who's calling? Mike Waring. We just stepped out for a while. Want to leave a message? Who's this? It's okay. I'm a friend of his. My name is Vince Dario. I'll tell Hoffman I've got a lead on his girlfriend. She's supposed to be at Riverdale Arms. If you'll meet me at the 86 Club, we'll go over together. Thanks a lot, Mr. Waring. I know Carl be glad to hear that. It's about time, Hoffman. Sorry, I'm late, but I just got your message. Where'd you get your dope from? A punk named Sheppy Oliver. What? Yeah, he pulled a gun on me. That's the funniest thing I've heard yet. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Sheppy's a friend of mine. Oh, is that so? Sure. When he heard you asking for Janet, he must have gotten suspicious. Why? Well, he's not very bright. What was that address he gave you again? Riverdale Arms. That's what I thought. It's a bump steer. How do you know? That's where Sheppy lives himself. Why would he give me his own address? Probably rattled him so badly. It was the only thing he could think of. Well, that's one possibility. Can you think of any other? Yeah, maybe Janet had a partner. You mean Sheppy? Why not? He's my best friend. Uh-huh. And Janet was your best girl. Let's go see who's playing on whose team. Four A, B. It's the last one down the hall, wearing. You know, there's one thing that throws me. Only one? After I left your office, I went back to Janet's apartment. I was talking with Vince Dario when the phone rang. So? A girl got on. I would have sworn it was Janet, but she claimed it was the wrong number. 
Well, maybe she was trying to get in touch with Sheppy, and she got frightened when she heard your voice. Could be, but I never thought Sheppy was her type. This is the place. I just can't believe that he... Hmm. What's the matter? Unlocked? Yeah. Yeah. Just as I figured. Well, I guess I better call the police, huh? Well, what's the matter? Take a good look. Holy smoke. It's Sheppy. Yeah, and with that slug in his head, I don't think he's in any position to call the cops himself. Where's the phone? Come on, Vince, open up. What took you so long? I was busy. Who's your friend? Oh, that's right. You boys haven't met. Mike, this is Vince Dario. How do you do? Hi. How did that lead pan out? Not too bad. You find Janet there? No, we found Sheppy. I don't get it. He was murdered. Murdered? By who, Janet? That's one way to look at it. Bill Raniata? Yeah, I suppose Janet was working with a man. If you mean Sheppy, I don't see it. That's just what I said. Look, Carl, suppose we forget the whole thing. What do you mean? We gambled and lost. Oh, you surprised me, Vince. A couple hours ago, you were balling me up and not doing anything. Now you're willing to write the whole thing off. There's no use crying over spilt milk. Sure. With 80 grand in your pocket, you can always buy yourself another quart. Oh? You say something, Waring? Just oh. Look, Carl, you've been hinting at something all along. What is it? I think you know where Janet is. You're crazy. I was a sucker not to see it before. Don't be a fool, Carl. Can't you see what Janet's doing? She murdered Sheppy. Now she's turning us against each other. Well, somebody put her up to it, and I got a feeling it's you. Quit it, quit it you joke. Cut it out, Hoffman. Out of this, Mike. Where is she, Vince? Come on, Hoffman, break it up. Mike, let go. I said break it up. Okay. Dario. What was the idea, Hoffman? I don't like double crosses. Get the keys out of his pocket. What for? I got a hunch Janet is holed up in his apartment. And I'm going to play it to the hilt. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only a few minutes have passed since Carl Hoffman decided that Janet might be hiding in Vince Dario's apartment. Now he and Mike are at Dario's, but so far there's been no sign of Janet. Looks like your hunch was worthless, Hoffman. You try the kitchen? I've been all over the place. There's no one here. I still believe that Janet was working. Uh, Wait a minute. Open that drawer again. Hmm? I thought I saw an envelope in there. Yeah, you're right. Mr. Vince Dario. 2719 Bolton Avenue, Detroit. Look at the postmark. Bedford Hills, March 16th, 1948. Now look at the return address on the other side. Janet Halsey, State Penitentiary for Women. Uh Uh-huh. You get it? And I was right. Vince knew Janet all along. Well, you could build up a convincing case on the face of it. Yeah, but where is she now? Can't you think of somewhere she might go? Oh, we've covered every possible hideout. No, we haven't. There's one place you're forgetting, Hoffman. Who's? Yours. What are you talking about? You're the man who put Janet up to this. You planned to double-cross your mob from the beginning. Yeah? Yeah, and I thought you did pretty well. You murdered Sheppy and framed Vince Dario, and that only left Janet to be taken care of. What about you? I don't think you're man enough. That just goes to... <laughs> What's the matter, Hoffman? You lose something? That's what you're looking for? Where'd you get that gun? I lifted it off you when you were shoving Dario around. Just say the word, friend, and I'll give it back to you. A slug at a time. Well, what happened after that, Mike? You know the rest, Janet. As soon as the police picked up Carl, I went to his apartment. And picked me up. And not a bad day's work at that. Thanks. No, no, I'm talking about the little bag you had with you containing 80 grand belonging to the McGill Company. Oh, now, what gets me is how you people knew exactly what time the payroll was to be delivered. Oh, I had inside information. From the boy who delivered it? How did you guess? It figured. What did you do? Use your feminine wiles? It didn't take much. He wanted to prove what a great big man he was. Mm-hmm. Well, you have that effect on the opposite sex. Do I? Yeah, it's just too bad you had all your work for nothing. Yeah, I guess when you come down to it, I was pretty lucky at that. You sure were, Angel. 
There's no doubt that with Sheppy and Vince Dario disposed of, you were next on Carl's list. Dirty double-crosser. No, no, no. There's no reason to be angry. After all, you were in on 99% of the plot. He just neglected to tell you the big finish he planned for you. Oh, incidentally, when you called your apartment and got Hoffman on the phone, why did you pretend it was the wrong number? We had it arranged. When Carl picked up the phone and said, yes, what do you want? I knew he wasn't alone, and that was my cue to hang up. Mm, pretty cute. <laughs> That was the second way he convinced Dario he was acting above board. What was the first, Mike? Hiring me. He had to go through with the motions of trying to find you, and what would make him look more innocent than hiring a private detective? I still don't see what proved you he was guilty. Well, the return address on the envelope that I found in Dario's room gave your name as Janet Halsey. And Carl told me when you were up at the women's pen, you served time under the name of Lois Hart. So obviously the letter was a frame. And Carl was the only one who could have planted it. That's right. You know, you're pretty wonderful, honey. I mean, uh, Mr. Waring. Oh, I don't mind you getting affectionate. After all, we're going to be seeing lots of each other, Janet. Are we? Mm-hmm. Almost past our destination. Is this where you live? <laughs> What's the matter with you, Janet? Don't you recognize the building? It's police headquarters. That's right. Why, you no good double Now, now, now. What are you complaining about, Angel? I promised you we'd be seeing a lot of each other. Can I help it if for the next ten years it'll have to be through bars? Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nina. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm in the middle of a hot deal. Mm -hmm. Some boys I know are interested in the big money... And they figure if we put all our capital in a gun, we ought to make a killing. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Quarrelsome Quartet. Before the Falcon starts on tonight's case, I'd like to say just a word about something extra delicious. Kraft mayonnaise. Here's really true mayonnaise at its finest. One taste will tell you that. Just one taste of delicate, exquisitely flavored Kraft mayonnaise will tell you that here is mayonnaise to delight even the fussiest cook. Try it. Try it and see for yourself. Tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of wonderful tasting Kraft. Mayonnaise. And now, the case of the quarrelsome quartet. It's late evening in New York, and in a shabby apartment on Manhattan's west side, a short, heavy set boy named Dixie Taylor watches his companion, Georgie Reynolds, attack an age old problem. How to dispose of an empty bottle. But George is equal to the occasion, for spying the fireplace, he comes up with a practical solution. Well, I guess that's one way to get rid of your empties. Anybody ask you, Taylor? No. All right, then shut your face. Hazel? Hazel! You want me, George? No, I was just rehearsing. I'm going in for hard calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I was busy. Well, I hope I wasn't interrupting anything important. No, honey. Get me another bottle. Well, darling, don't you Didn't think... I tell you something? All right, George. It's one of my bedroom closet. Well, what are you staring at, Dixie? I was just wondering about Hazel. Well, don't. If you're going to do any wondering, think about Martinez. Although he'll be here. Yeah, when? He was due an hour ago. Or well, maybe he had some trouble finding Saunders. Oh, that's just ducky. What goes on with you guys anyway? Do I have to oh, tell that's you... That's probably Martinez and Saunders now. Hazel? Yes, George? Didn't you hear that? Well, I was trying to get... Never mind the alibis, that's... Yeah, just a second. Hello, Hazel. Hello, Mr. Martinez. Your boyfriend here? Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Come on in, bring your friend with you. Hi, Georgie. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Louis. Well, you took your own sweet time getting here, Martinez. Well, I have a little bit trouble finding Mr. Saunders here. Gentlemen. Bring in a couple of chairs, Hazel. Yes, dear. All right, now go on. Go on, beat it. But, darling... I said beat it. These fellas and I have some business to discuss. 
Uh, well, Martinez, did you tell Saunders what I lined up? No, I think was maybe better I leave that for you. It's a snatch, Saunders. A what? A snatch. That's what I thought you said. Well, it's been nice knowing you, gentlemen. Sit down, Saunders. No, thanks, I'm not interested. It cost you something to listen? All right. Ever hear of Big Joe Gallagher? Well, enough to know that if he's the party you got in mind, you can include me out, as the saying goes. Now, don't be a jerk, Saunders. Sure, Gallagher's a big rackets boy, but that's just why we can get away with this. You're crazy. Now, look, Martinez, why didn't you tell Let me that... Georgie finish. Dixie and I used to work for Gallagher. We know what makes him tick. A guy in his position would never yell copper. Yes, but there's one thing you're overlooking. From what I know of Mr. Gallagher, he never goes anywhere without two or three of his boys. How are you going to separate the wheat from the chaff? I got it all figured out. Gallagher's a ladies' man, see? Now, if a babe were to call him up and arrange a blind date, it's dollars to donuts he'd go for it. I doubt it. Don't tell me. I've seen it work a dozen times. You got the girl? Yeah. Yeah, Hazel, the one who let you in. I suppose she talks. She wouldn't dare. Besides, she doesn't have to know what's going on. I'll tell her the whole thing's a gag. Where do I come in? Hazel will arrange to meet Gallagher at the 49 Club. You and Martinez will pick him up. What about you and Taylor? Now, we can't take a chance. He knows us. Well, what do you say, Saunders? You think this will work, Martinez? Why not? Georgie's got all the angles figured out. (laughs) So it would seem. Okay, gentlemen... Deal me in. Yeah? I'd like to speak to Mr. Gallagher, please. Uh, Who wants him? Well, he wouldn't know me, but you can tell him I'm a friend of Gloria Wilson. I never heard of her. Are you Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, that's right. Well, Gloria made me promise to look you up when I got to New York. I'm sorry, sister. I don't know anybody by that handle. She was a chorus girl at Pirandello's. Hey, wait a minute, baby. What's your name? Hazel Walsh. Uh, you look anything like you sound, Hazel? <laughs> oh, now, really, Mr. No Gallagher. kidding, because if you do, I'd like to see you. Uh, I'm afraid that's out of the question, Mr. Gallagher. I'm flying to the coast tonight. Ah, uh-huh. what time? Quarter after one. Well, that still gives us three hours to get acquainted. What do you say, baby? Mm, all right. But uh, you'll have to meet me here. You see, I'm expecting friends. Oh, that's okay. Where are you? It's a little place called the 49 Club. Do you know it? No, but I'll manage. Uh, uh, what color dress you wearing? Blue. <laughs> My favorite color. Okay, Hazel. I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> Say, hey, buddy. Uh, who, me? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have no seen a blonde around, huh? Uh, blue dress? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Oh, uh, who are you? Hazel's cousin. Didn't she tell you we're having a little farewell party in her honor? Well, she said something about friends. Oh, now don't get frightened. We'll be pushing off in a few minutes, and that'll give you enough time to talk to Hazel alone. Uh, where is she? She's in the back room with the rest of the family. Well, let's go. Uh, right down here. Uh, by the way, fella, I don't believe I caught your name. Well, it's the same as Hazel's. <laughs> Related on your father's side. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, here we are. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Louis. This is, uh, Hazel's friend. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Where's Hazel? Oh, she just stepped out for a minute. Well, uh, where's the rest of the crowd? Crowd? Yeah, her cousin told me she had a flock of relatives down here. <laughs> Never believe Saunders. He's a big joker. Saunders? I thought his name was Walsh. What goes on here, anyway? Watch him, Saunders. Just keep those hands where they are, Mr. Gallagher. Frisk him, Martinez. Get your hands ah, off me. Don't get excited, Mr. Gallagher. He's bad for your blood pressure. Is he clean? He is now. Good. Would you be kind enough to accompany us, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, no, you're not getting me to walk out of here. Well, as long as you feel... Let me... I have to hand it to him, Martinez. He said he wasn't walking out of here, and uh, he was right. Guys, anyway, got the time, Dixie? You asked me that just five minutes ago, George. Now, don't get smart. 
Think anything could have gone wrong? Not a chance. What'd you tell Galga's wife? Just what you told me. I said we had a husband, and if she wanted them back, she was to dig up a hundred grand. Yeah, maybe I should have gone for it myself instead of sending Saunders and Martinez. What are you worried about, Georgie? They managed the snatch, all right. Yeah, but how do I know that they're... George. Able... I'll get it. Hello, George. You got it, Saunders? What does this bag look like? All right, let me have it. How'd it go off? Oh, the clock works. As soon as Mrs. Gallagher gives us the money, I give her the key and tell her where to find her husband. Oh, nice work, Louie. Yes, I guess congratulations are in order all around. One hundred thousand dollars. Just, just think of it. You think of it, Saunders. Because that's as close as you're getting to it. What do you mean, George? Well, I tell you, friend, it's like this. The boys and I had a little talk. And you decided why split four ways, huh? Well, you catch on fast. But well, didn't you think I'd have anything to say about that? Sure, I put away that gun, Saunders. Uh, yeah, yeah. Georgia was only clowning. Yes, I'll bet. You know, I'm a little surprised at you, Dixie. Uh, look, if, if we were going to double-cross you, you think we'd send you for the dough? Sure, that doesn't make sense, does it? But... No, don't move, Palsy. Just drop the gun. Nice go on, Martinez. Well, Mr. Smart Guy, what do you say? That's enough, Georgie. Go on, Saunders. Beat it. All right. Gentlemen, if this little get-together hasn't been pleasant, it, it has been informative. Well, I'll be very glad to show you what I learned next time we meet. <laughs> Hello? Uh, I'm looking for a Michael Waring, private detective called the Falcon. Well, you picked the right place. Oh, are you... Mm -hmm. Come on in, Angel. And... Thank you. Sit down. I suppose I should introduce myself. It's customary. Uh, well, my name is Hazel Walsh. Hazel Walsh? Ah, oh, that's right. Who recommended me? Well, I remembered hearing about the Falcon years ago. And you filed the information away for this more convenient date, hmm? Uh, yes. <laughs> Are you available for a case? At $50 a day and expenses, I am. What's your problem? Well, it's really not my problem, Mr. Waring. A, a girlfriend of mine is engaged to some man, and she believes that he's done something... Uh, Crooked? Of course not. All right, let's call it unethical. Go on. Well, uh, if the man ever was caught, could they force my friend to be a witness against him? They certainly could, and... Even though she found out about it by accident? Doesn't make any difference, Miss Walsh. Well, isn't there anything she can do? Nope. Only if she were married to him could she refuse to testify. Well, if we got married... I mean, if they got married, <laughs> I... Let's use the first example, Hazel. It'll be easier on us both. Now, look here, Mr. Warren. No, you look, Angel. You're obviously in some sort of a jam. Now, what is it? I tell you, you're wrong. What did your boyfriend do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. I suppose you tell me his name. It's uh, Harry Prescott. Come on, Hazel. What's his name? Well, you have no right to question me like this. No, but the police have. But you're, you're not going to call him. No? Well, it, it's George Reynolds. He the same Georgie Reynolds who used to run with the Gallagher mob? No. Uh, no, it's not that one at all. Uh -huh. Well, suppose you introduce us and let me see for myself. Hmm? I'm an easy man to convince. <laughs> Well, sounds as though Mike follows that good old theory that seeing is believing. Of course, that's a pretty smart idea, I think. And it's a good one for everyone to follow when it comes to food. For example, I can tell you how satiny smooth Kraft mayonnaise is. What an amazing, creamy, rich texture it has because of the special way Kraft blends it. But to really appreciate just how smooth Kraft Kitchen Fresh mayonnaise is, get a jar and see for yourself. That way you can taste for yourself, too. You won't have to take my word for it that Kraft mayonnaise is especially good, with a delicate, delightful flavor, the result of careful blending of only the finest oils and eggs, the most fragrant vinegars and spices. Yes, the best way to tell is to taste Kraft mayonnaise yourself. Try it on a cool and colorful salad of hollowed-out tomatoes topped with spicy deviled eggs and garnished with fresh and tangy watercress. 
It's really delicious. So tomorrow when you shop, get a jar of Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Whether you're serving a simple, everyday kind of salad or a fancy company special, you'll enjoy it more with true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Hazel Walsh introduced herself to Mike Waring, and now the two are on their way to Georgie Reynolds' apartment. And strangely enough, Miss Walsh doesn't seem too delighted by the trip. I don't know why I let you talk me into this, Mr. Waring. Simple, Hazel. You're the kind of girl who's taken such a licking, you could be talked into anything. That's a lie. All right, then why did you bring me here? Because I thought you could help George. Well, if it's the same George I think it is, you'll have to get yourself another boy. Whatever made you tie up with a guy like that? I don't think that concerns you. That's the place? Yes. Can I help? No, thanks. Where's the light switch? Uh, a little over to your right. Have you got it? Yep. George! Stop that. I saw him. Now you stay where you are. Is he? Yes, he's nothing else but. Oh, no. Someone gave it to him right through the temple. George! George! Look, when you get a grip on yourself. How can you talk to me like that when my fiancé's been murdered? I can talk to you like that because it's not your fiancé. What? This is a boy named Dixie Taylor. Now will you behave? I can't believe it, Mr. Waring. There must be some mistake. What's the matter, Hazel? You disappointed it isn't George? Of course not. Did you know Taylor? Uh, well, he was a friend of George's. I saw him around here once or twice. Who else was a member of this fraternity? Uh, just a man named Louis Martinez. Uh. Well, that's some select group. I've heard of all of them. Did they blackball anyone recently? I don't know what you mean. Did your boyfriend and Martinez cross anyone lately? I don't think so. Hazel, you better stop lying. You don't do it very well. Well, there was a Nick Saunders. Good-looking boy, around 35? Yes. What did they fight about? I don't know. You think Saunders might have killed Dixie? I suppose so. How about George? No. Oh, Hazel, don't be a sucker. You think he'll appreciate your loyalty? Why don't you ask him, Worry? Oh, Georgie... All right, I will. Isn't it nice of her not to suspect you, George? Not to suspect me of what? Take a look under that blanket. Oh. Who did it? That's just what I was asking. You got any suggestions? Larry or one? Say, who invited you here, anyway? She didn't. Oh, is that so? Uh, darling, I was only thinking of you. Now, that's the truth, George. Never have I seen a woman show so much concern. All right, Waring, beat it. I don't need you. How about Hazel? She don't need you either. Go on, Hazel. Tell him. Uh, I made a mistake, Mr. Waring. I'm sorry. You mean that? Yes. Okay. So be it. Oh, when the police show up, tell them I had to leave. It'll huh? be a pleasure. Well, listen, Georgie, I, I know what you're going to say. Do you? Oh, darling, I was only thinking of you. I, I know what you, Dixie Martinez, did to Saunders. That's why I went to Waring. Well, that was smart. But I was worried about Saunders. And I'm worried about you, Hazel. You think you'll ever learn to keep your mouth shut? Or do I have to teach you? Oh! Hello, Corbett. This is Mike Waring. Ah, uh, what's on your mind, Mike? Listen, what kind of caper has Georgie Reynolds pulled recently? Well, there's some talk going around that Big Joe Gallagher was snatched last week. Oh, that's crazy, Sergeant. I saw him on 48th Street yesterday. I know, but that's the story we got. According to one of my pet stoolies, his missus laid out a hundred grand to get him back. You think Georgie Reynolds was behind it? Wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, can't you do anything? You tell me how when we got no proof. Mrs. Gallagher hasn't seen fit to make a complaint. Was Nick Saunders in on it? You seem to know more about it than I do. What do you know about Saunders? Not quite enough, Sergeant. I'll let you know the minute I learn more. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a body over at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. Go over and pick it up like a good fellow, will you? <laughs> Yes? 
Yes. Hello, Saunders. Remember me? Oh, sure, sure. You're the uh, Falcon, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Can I come in? Why not? Sorry, I can't offer you anything. Well, you never know unless you try. All right, Waring, what's on your mind? Well, I heard you and George Reynolds had a little trouble last night. You must be thinking of two other guys. Well, what gets me is why you took it out on Taylor. Taylor? Yeah, haven't you heard? He's dead. Not my old pal Dixie. Well, 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 what do you know? I know you better have a pretty good alibi handy. Come on, Saunders, get your coat. We're going to headquarters. Uh, just brief me on one thing, Waring. You're a private detective, aren't you? That's right. Now, where do you get off pushing people around? It's my hobby. You going to get your coat or will you go like that? Oh, act your age. Put away the gun, Saunders. Put it away before I... Cut it out. Go on, drop it. Go away, drop it. All right, now, what do you say, friend? Do we take that little ride I mentioned? Okay, Waring. But don't be surprised if someday I return the favor. <laughs> Is there a guy named Mike Waring here? That's me, Inspector. Come in here. I want to talk to you. Okay. See you later, Sergeant. Hey, bad. Sit down, Waring. Oh, thanks. Sergeant Corbett tells me you're the boy who brought in Saunders. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Well, I'm glad you got a kick out of it, because I just talked to headquarters about you. What for? To see how they feel about attempted blackmail. What are you talking about? Didn't you try to shake down Saunders? Is that what he claimed? No, I can put two and two together myself. Well, you ought to go back to school, Inspector. There's something wrong with your arithmetic. I doubt it. When you start shoving a guy around just because he's got a record, there's only one answer. Oh, you're crazy. I tell you, Saunders killed Dixie Taylor. How? He shot him, that's how. From Philadelphia? Oh, what are you talking about? Going to the coroner, Dixie Taylor died at 8.30 p.m. So what? Well, at 8.25, Saunders was picked up by the Pennsylvania State Police for carrying a rod without a license. And he wasn't released until two hours later. Now, who doesn't know his arithmetic? Hello, Mike. What? Hazel. How did you get in here? The superintendent let me in. I've got to talk to you. Now, that makes us even, Angel, because I want to talk to you. Look, you've got to drop the case. Now, that raises a problem. How can I drop something I've never been paid for in the first place? I don't understand. I mean, if I'm going to work for free, I might as well do it for myself. You can't do that. Well, I'd like to see someone stop me. What's Georgie's phone number? Why? Because I want to talk to him. Uh, what about? The murder of Dixie Taylor. He doesn't know anything about it. Are you kidding? Now, what's the number? Come on, Hazel, I'm not clowning. It's Raleigh 4099. Now, cheer up, baby. When I get through with Mr. Reynolds, he won't ever lay a hand on you again. You don't hear me complain. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me you love the guy. I do. Hello. Uh, is that you, Reynolds? No, uh, this is Luis Martinez. Who are you? Mike Waring. Let me talk to George. I'm afraid that is out of the question. Listen, Martinez, if I have to come over there... It still won't do you any good. He's dead. He's what? Yeah. Someone fed him a dose of strychnine about an hour ago. And somehow we didn't seem to agree with him. <laughs> True, Mike. I, I don't believe it. Martinez was lying. I suppose we go over and check. Oh, but George is dead. Oh, come on, Hazel. Get a grip on yourself. You're better off without him. Oh, how can you talk that way? Because it's the truth. He was no good. That's a lie. No, don't give me that. You knew he was the brain behind the big Joe Gallagher snatch. No, you're wrong. Who oh, are you kidding? Well, so incidentally, what happened to the loot? The loot? The ransom money Mrs. Gallagher paid off. How would I know? Well, you would if anybody would. You can't keep it, Angel. I didn't intend to. Then where is it? Well, they, they didn't tell me, but I, I watched them through the keyhole. Where did they put it? Under the middle cushion of the sofa in George's apartment. Okay, let's get it before someone else gets the same idea. I wouldn't be surprised if we're a little late now. <laughs> You know what Mike said just now about getting there first? Sounds like the race that usually goes on at my house for the last piece of cold chicken in the refrigerator. But a chicken sandwich sure makes a swell snack, especially when you put lots of Kraft mayonnaise on the bread. 
Mmm, the delicate flavor of Kraft mayonnaise is just exactly what you want. And Kraft mayonnaise is so creamy, rich, and smooth. Just try it. For a grand sandwich spread, as well as for fine salads, there's nothing like true mayonnaise at its finest. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring learned that with the recent death of Georgie Reynolds and the earlier demise of Dixie Taylor, the original quartet was now working as a duo on a hundred thousand dollars worth of loose notes. And now as we rejoin the team of Mark and Hazel, they're making their entrance at Georgie Reynolds' apartment. But Hazel seems to be suffering with a bad case of stage fright. What's the matter, Angel? Having trouble? I guess I'm a little nervous. Oh, here, let me try. Ah, come in, folks. Louis. What do you expect? Shut the door, Waring. Look, Martinez. I said shut the door. I'll raise him high. All right, you don't have to worry. I'm clean. I don't believe in taking chances. What's the matter? No sporting blood? Yeah, I guess I'm yellow. Too bad Georgie didn't have as much sense. Where is he? Move the club chair. What? Yeah, go on. He's behind it. That won't bring him back. You killed him? Well, while we are on this subject, where were you at 11.30? She was waiting for me in my apartment. Mm, nice. Look, you better watch that mouth. And you better watch yours. All right, Hazel, where is it? Where is what? The dough we got from Gallagher. I don't know. Don't give me that. I want it, honey bunch, and nothing's going to keep me from it, understand? I wouldn't count on that, Louis. What? No, no, no. Don't bother turning around, Martinez. It's only me. Listen, Saunders. Don't mind if I do, Martinez, but first drop the gun. That's a sweetheart. You want me to pick it up? No, no, no. Don't trouble yourself, Waring. I can manage. Oh, what happened to Georgie? The same thing that happened to Dixie Taylor. And... He was such a sweet guy, wasn't he? Oh, by the way, when I walked in here, Martinez was asking you a question. I don't remember your answering it. Would you like to now? You'll never see a penny of that money. Come on, come on, Hazel. We're wasting time. Where is it? You better tell him, Angel. I think he means business. I do, and make no mistake about it. Uh, it's under the middle cushion of the sofa. What? Stay where you are, Martinez. I'll do my own checking. Oh, now, isn't that pretty? Listen, Saunders. I'm afraid I haven't the time, Louis. You have to find it, Saunders. What? Get down, Hazel! No! Hey! Had enough, Saunders? Yes, he has. Oh, well, hello, Sergeant. Hi, Mike. The inspector sent me around to apologize. Oh, what happened? Twenty minutes ago, a call came through from Philly that that Saunders they picked up there was this guy's cousin. I thought there was something screwy playing. Well, if you fellas don't mind... Uh, just a minute. Where are you going, Martinez? Well, I just figure it's no point of my hanging around just now. Well, you better get used to it, Louie. You're going to do quite a bit of it from now on. What are you talking about? You killed Dixie Taylor and George Reynolds. You're crazy. Well, maybe you're right. Here I've got you hanging when any kid knows that in New York they burn you. All right, Sergeant, prove it to him. Mike. Oh, don't say it, Angel. But I was just going to ask... Ask me to explain things, hmm? Well, yes. Well, I guess you're entitled to it. You see, this was a modern version of thieves falling out. When Louis Martinez saw our George double-cross Saunders, it didn't take him long to figure that he was next. So he decided to beat your boyfriend to the punch. First he killed Dixie, which made it look bad for Saunders. And then to ensure his bet, he killed George. Then why did he wait at the house for us? Well, he had to. You were the only one who knew where the money was stashed. And until he got it, he committed two murders for nothing. Well, couldn't have Saunders have done that? Mm -mm. I knew Martinez was the killer long before Saunders ever showed up. How? Well, Martinez told us he hadn't called the police, so obviously there was no autopsy performed. Yet he knew exactly what poison killed George and the time he got it. Remember he told me over the phone that George had been fed a dose of strychnine an hour before I called? Mm -hmm. Well, now, how would he know that unless he was right there feeding it to him? Um, shall I tell you something? I wish you would. I lied to you about loving George, you see. Otherwise, I was afraid you might suspect me. Oh, I couldn't afford to, Angel. Uh, why not? Well, you're much prettier than Martinez and Saunders. Oh, I, I don't understand. Well, you see, I figured to wrap up this case around midnight. And if you were guilty, what would I do for a date? <laughs> Folks, here's sure, pure enjoyment for the whole family. Real, honest-to-goodness malteds made with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Easy to fix, too. You just make a tasty paste of Kraft malted milk in the bottom of a tall glass. Then fill the glass brimful of milk and stir it. 
Enjoy the best malted you ever put to your lips. Include craft malted milk on your shopping list for Tuesday. Enjoy a craft malted for snacks, with meals, or before bedtime. But be sure it's craft malted milk at your food store now. The case of the worried champion. The case of the worried champion. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that a boxing title is something a number of people are willing to shoot for. So be sure to listen next week at this same time to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Amzy Strickland as Hazel. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. Thanks for calling, Angel. I can't make it tonight. Have to see a girl about a prize fighter. He was asked to throw a fight, and it looks like he has a choice of being knocked out or knocked off. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best selling novels, then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon sounds. The Case of the Worried Champion. The Worried Champion. It's Sunday in New York, and this particular Sunday happens to be the birthday of boxing champion Tommy Foster. So Foster's manager, Luke Whitney, is throwing a big celebration at the River Steakhouse, and a good time is being had by all. When suddenly Foster's jaw tightens and he scowls as he stares across the room. Whitney notices. Oh, what's the matter, kid? Look who just came in. Oh. Well, what do you know, Steve Cortez? It was in the paper you having the party for me here. That's why he came. Oh, what? Don't let it get you. I know what he's trying with me. He wants to get my ghost. So you don't let him. You laugh it off. Burns me up. The way he's been yapping in the papers oh, about... of the game, kid. You should know that by now. Well, he didn't have to come here. Look, if you're going to let him get you like this... Hey, here he comes. Over to this table. All right, just sit tight. Let me do the talking. Save the fireworks for the ring. Well, if this isn't a coincidence. Is it, Cortez? I suppose you didn't know Whitney was having a birthday party for me here tonight. No kidding, champ. Well, happy birthday to you. If I'd known, I'd have brought a cake. Well, why don't you sit down, Cortez? Join the party. Well, thanks, Whitney, but I don't think the champ would like it. But to keep reminding him what's in store for it. Now, look, if you think I'm afraid of you, Cortez... Now, I... where would I get an idea like that? Just because you've been dodging me for two years? I wasn't dodging. Just I... because the only reason you finally agreed to meet me was the commission threatening to suspend you if you didn't? That's a lie. Oh, Never mind, Whitney. I'll quit riding for you. I see he's the excitable type. So I won't upset him anymore. Until we get in the ring. Oh, yeah? <laughs> now, that's what I call a bright remark. I'll show you who's bright. Right on, will you? You think I'm a scary? Stop you. it, Foster. Stop your trouble. Let go with me. I'm not taking any more of his orders. All right, Cortez, you've been asking for it. Try this on, but stop. Well, Whitney, there's your chance. If him and me are going to meet in the ring, you better start picking up the pieces. <laughs> All right, Cortez, you're in good form. You can lay off the bag for a while. How are you, Rich? You disappointed me, son. You disappointed me badly. Yeah, how? The little fracas with Foster the other night. He started it? Of course he wasn't goaded into it, Cortez. You wouldn't dream of needling him. He's punchy. He blows his top easy. Did you know something, son? What? I had 75000 invested in you to take Foster... And then this ridiculous incident, most disappointing. How do you figure that? I flattened him in ten seconds. Looks to me like the investor's smart. Where's the disappointment? The odds, son, the odds. 
You've jumped to a one to five favorite. No percentage in backing you at that figure. You'll still win. I always insist on a better return for my I'm money. I'm sorry, Rich, but Foster asked for it. I didn't come here to quibble about the details. Now, why did you come here? You see, Cortez, it's like this. Considering the shift in odds, I'm forced to back Foster now instead of you. You understand? All right, it's your dough if you want to throw it away. You don't understand. I have no intentions of throwing it away. So what do you want me to do? Have I asked you to do anything? I'm beginning to get the idea without you asking. Good. I counted on your good sense. Oh, chase yourself. I just wanted you to know I'm not the only one betting on Foster. And if you whip him, well, somebody will resent it. I thought I should tip you off, son. I always like to do the friendly thing. Well, thanks so much. Now get out of here. And not so fast. I might be asked your attitude in this matter. If I am, what answer do I give? Oh, you, uh, you want an answer, huh, Rich? Yes. All right. Here it is in a nutshell. So you slugged, Rich? Yeah. For a fellow who makes his living by fighting, it seems to me you're giving away an awful lot of free samples. They asked for it. Even so, Rich wanted me to take a dive. I don't go for that. Going to report him to the boxing commission? I can take care of myself. I don't need the commission. But I thought you're supposed to report any gambler who asks you to throw a fight. Look, leave me handle it my way, will you? Sure, Steve, sure. <laughs> you sure are touchy lately. I got things on my mind. What things? Don't tell me the fight's bothering you. Of course, they don't make me laugh. And what is it? It's nothing. But you just... Look, said... what are you, a detective or something? No, Steve, I'm just trying All the to... time you got to act suspicious. Well, I wasn't suspicious, but now I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, now you're beginning to wonder. Yes, I am. Come to think of it, you broke three dates with me last week. I told you, training. Got to get the bed early. One of the nights was the night you had that fight with Foster. You break a date with me and wind up in a nightclub? Not a nightclub. It's a restaurant. That's all I got to eat, don't I? Act like I never take you nowhere. You're beginning to act like maybe you don't want to. Steve, what's the matter? Is there somebody else? It don't mean anything. Just a couple of dates. Oh, then there is something. I don't get any ideas. It's you getting ideas I'm worried about. I told you, it don't mean anything. It's you and me, baby. You know that. Yeah, you and me and how many others? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Tommy Foster. Yeah. Well, come in, champ. Thanks. You, uh, you're Mike Waring, ain't you, detective? Mm hmm. They call you the Falcon. You're supposed to be good. Well, they call you the champ. You're supposed to be good, too, but Cortez flattened you. I didn't come here to get ribbed, Waring. Why did you come here? I just heard Don Rich called on Cortez the other day. The gambler? The gambler. He asked Cortez to throw the fight. Where'd you hear this? From Margo Marino. She's Cortez's girl. Only they had a fight. And she says rich proposition, Cortez? Yeah. Well? Well, I want you to check, see if she's on the level. Why? Well, Cortez should have reported rich to the commission, and he didn't. So if Margo was shooting straight, Cortez could get himself suspended. You mean you could get him suspended? What's the matter? You afraid to meet him? Why, you... No, no, no. Careful, Foster. Slugging me is no way to get me to work for you. Everybody thinks I'm a scared of Cortez. Look, I want to meet him, you understand? I've been ready right along, only Whitney wouldn't sign me up. Whitney's your manager? Yeah. So, Whitney's a scared of Cortez. He said Cortez wouldn't draw flies. Uh, well, maybe you will after Cortez gets through with you. Funny man, I ought to... Now, look, look, you came here to get me to help you out of the fight with Cortez. You can't expect my overwhelming admiration. You've got it wrong. I just want a fair fight. When I lick him, I don't want nobody saying that he took a dive. That's not the way you put it before. Well, that's the way I meant it before. Now, you, you're going to take the job, or ain't you? You want me to check with Cortez's girl and find out if she was telling the truth about Rich? Huh? Yes. Well, why not just report what she said to the commission and let them investigate? Well, I don't want to stick my neck out if she's lying. Mm -hmm. What's the girl look like? <whistles> oh, really? Yeah. All right, Foster. I'll take the job. <laughs> Yes? Margo Marino. That's right. Mm. Foster was right. But what? I don't get it. Angel, you've got it. 
Look, who are you? What's the Mike I... Waring, Celine. Yes, Mr. Waring? Why not call me Mike, huh? I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to call you yet, but I'm getting ideas. Now, what do you want? In? Not so fast. Oh, sure, so fast. Hey! Now, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship, Angel, so uh, let's get started. Hmm? Shall I close the door? I'm warning you, I've got good lungs. You won't need them. I'm here on business. Oh, what business? Why did you tell Foster that Don Rich tried to buy off Steve Cortez? Because it happens to be true. You and Cortez had a falling out, didn't you? Suppose we did. Couldn't it be you're just trying to put him on a spot to get even? Could be. It's not. Can you prove it? If I had to. What's it to you? Well, you've made a serious charge. I can back it up. I still want to know why you're interested. Who told you what I said? Tommy Foster. Oh. Who are you, reporter? Not exactly. Then... Hey, wait a minute. I'm waiting. You work for Don Rich? <laughs> How'd you guess? Why'd he send you here? To threaten me? Find me off? Well, as a matter of fact, I... Just a minute. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's you, Steve. No, I haven't changed my mind. Now, look, lover boy, if you want to play the field, just don't expect me... Steve! What happened? Steve! What's the matter? I don't know. He was talking to me, and then all of a sudden I heard a noise. It's like a shot. A shot? Yes. Steve gasped, and then he wasn't talking to me anymore. Well, we'd better get to him right away and see what Steve has to say about it, if anything. Home of the KMX Drum Hour. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A minute has passed since a phone call from Steve Cortez to Margot was interrupted by what Margot said sounded like a shot. Now Margot and Mike Waring have rushed down to the street to look for a taxi to take them to Cortez. There's a cab. Taxi! Taxi! Come on, Margot. All right. All right, Angel, get it. Hey, driver, where'd she go? Right there she is, mister, running across the street. Margot! Hey, come back here. All the crazy. Marco, look out. Brother, was that close? Yeah, just missed. Well, there's no use my following. I might not have her luck in traffic. <laughs> you must be some wolf to make a risk of neck like that. Well, you got it wrong, driver. You know, how come she scrams like that? I'm not sure, but I don't think what scares her is a fate worse than death. You don't? No, what I think scares her is death. All right, driver, let's go. <laughs> Hello, Sergeant Corbett. Mike Waring. I hate to disturb your canasta, old boy, but I found a stiff in room 308 at the Hotel Aldrich. Look into it, will you? Now that I've confirmed the murder, I can't hang around here. I have something more important on my mind. <laughs> no, not blonde. Brunette. So long, Corbett. <laughs> Hello, Waring. Come in. Thanks, Foster. Well, any luck, Waring? Yeah, lots of luck. You're not going to have to fight Cortez. Oh, you mean he's suspended? I mean he's dead. Eh? Murdered. Holy smoke. Who done it? Yeah, Foster, you just had a mouthful. Hey, me and him had that row the other night. You think anybody get the idea that... Yeah, I... probably. You gotta help? That's my business. Okay. You got yourself another job. Right. Did I hear somebody say Cortez was murdered? Yeah, Whitney. Waring is my manager, Luke Whitney. Hello, Whitney. Oh, uh, what's this about Cortez? Was he really... Yeah, really and truly. Champ, do you realize what this means? What does it mean? There goes our gate. We were sure of a sellout, no question about it, but now... I uh, thought you said Cortez wouldn't draw flies, Whitney. When did I say that? Well, you said it. Well, oh, oh, you mean last year, Champ. Sure, but now things are different. Cortez has a rep. We'd have cleaned up a sellout, no question. In fact, you might have had a double sellout. Huh? Well, sellout at the gate, and maybe Cortez would have sold out in the ring. That's why uh, you hired me, wasn't it, Foster? Yeah, well, was was that Marino Dame on the level? So it would seem. Hey, then, that's the way it ties up. Rich Dick is with Cortez. Cortez gives him the air, so Rich knocks off Cortez. No, 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 no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Foster. Right now, I'm interested in the girl. Do you think she killed Cortez? 
Hardly with me. She was with me when it happened. Oh, well, then why bother with her? Because she's making with an offbeat routine. First of all, Foster, how come she told you about Cortez and Rich? Oh, her and Cortez had a row. She wanted to give them the business. She could have gone to the commission. Well, she didn't know none of the commissioners, but she knew me. Uh-huh. And she figured I'd take it from there. I see. You know where I can find her? Yeah, I know her address. Yeah, she's not there. Have any idea where she'd go to hide out? Hide out? Who's the girl hiding out from, Warren? From me, what name? You. Yeah, and if this is the kind of results I get, I'm going to ask Dale Carnegie for my money back. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Hello, I'm Mike Waring. I'm looking for Don Rich. Mike Waring, I've been half expecting you. Come in, sir. Come in. Thank you. I take it you're rich. That's right. How come you were expecting me? And before we go any further, a conversation like this can never get anywhere unless one of the participants has the initiative. Therefore, allow me. Uh, all right, Rich. The gun gives you the initiative. Now what? Now you raise your hand above your head. That's it. And now we walk into the living room. Go ahead. Walk into my parlor. You may sit in that easy chair. Thank you. And if you like, you may put your hands down, one on each arm of the chair. As long as you keep them just like that, there'll be no trouble. You comfortable? With that heater pointed at my middle? (laughs) Sure, I feel fine. It's necessary for the moment. I understand you're working for me. Oh, you found Margot. Where is she? Look, son, I drew this revolver so that I should do the interrogating. I want to know why you said you were in my employ. I didn't. You just admitted it. The girl said so. It was her idea. What's your connection with her? I've just been wondering the same thing about you. But I have the gun. Oh, I haven't forgotten. Then answer my question and don't move your hands. All right, all right. I won't move my hands. How about my feet? Oh! No, I'll take that gun. No! Yes! There we are. All right, son, you win. Oh, don't look so grim, Rich. Don't tell me you didn't get a big kick out of it. I'm in no mood for humor. All right, as long as you're still in the mood for conversation. Only this time I have the initiative. What do you want to know? You're tied up with Margot. There isn't any tie up. She ran out on me. She blabbed to you. Because she thought you were working for me. Well, what's that got to do with it? Why not ask her? Where can I find her? At her apartment, probably. Well, that's the last place. She knows I might look there. She doesn't care anymore. How do you know? She was afraid of me. She thought you were employed by me. Now that that misunderstanding has been cleared up... She's not afraid of me anymore. How about you? Not afraid of me either. I made it clear she had no reason to be. But why was she in the first place? Because of the way you acted. Oh, no, 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 no. There was something else. I think not. I think so. Well, ask her. I intend to. So long, son. <laughs> Oh. oh, you, Mr. Waring. Uh, Mike. Well, still on a soup course, huh? I'll join you. I uh, was up at your place. The man at the desk said you'd be here. Well, I'll pass him a nut sack on next Christmas. <laughs> I thought you straightened things out with Rich. Not with you. Why did you say you worked for him? I didn't. You did. Who do you work for? Freelance. And what did you want with me? I told you, checking the yarn about Rich and Cortez. Suppose I tell you I was just lying. Steve and I had a fight and I wanted to make trouble. Look, it was a fool thing to do, but I was upset. Mm -hmm. How much did Rich pay you? What? To get you to switch your story. Nothing. You know, Angel, if you build up that fight between you and Cortez, you're just strengthening your motive for the murder. What of it? You wouldn't want people to get the idea you killed Steve, would you? I couldn't have killed him. I was with you at the time. Oh, yes, that's right. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Sarcastic. I was with you. So you were. Well, then? I'm afraid I'll have to skip dinner with you after all, Angel. And there are a couple of points I want to check. I'll be seeing you. Don't count on it, Mr. Waring. <laughs> Uh, just a minute. Uh, champ, for you. Who is it? Mike Waring. Oh, yeah. Hello, Waring. Listen, Foster, I've just about got the case wrapped up. Yeah? You mean you know who killed Cortez? I think so. Well, that's great. Uh, who is it? I have to iron out a couple of details first. Maybe you can help me. 
Can you come over to my place? Well, I, I got to see a guy at the Hotel Randolph in a little while. Couldn't you meet me there? We'll, we'll talk in the lobby, eh? Okay, Foster, 20 minutes? That's good for me. 20 minutes it is. So long, Larry. Okay, mister, here you are. Hotel Randolph. All right, driver. <coughs> Thank you. Say, can you change... Oh, hey! Mister, are you all right? <laughs> Oh, no, not you. That's funny. I could have sworn it is. I read in the paper you were shot. In the leg. It's not fatal. Oh, too bad. I'm coming in. No, you're not. Now, look, I'm in no condition to argue about it. But if you don't cooperate with me, you're taking a big chance. How so? Somebody tried to kill me. Next time, you may succeed unless I wrap this up quickly. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Well, now, don't you forget, Angel, I'm your alibi. What? Your proof that you didn't kill Cortez is that I was with you when he was murdered. But if I'm not around to admit... I see what you mean. All right, come in. Thank you. Now, how about the truth? What truth? About you and Rich. I don't know what you mean. As soon as Cortez was murdered, you ran to Rich. I didn't. Oh, There's no use denying it. He knew about me. He said he got it from you. Well, I... I found him, that's all. Why? I thought you were working for him. I wanted to know what it was about. The next time I saw you, you changed your story about Rich and Cortez. How did Rich get you to do that? He didn't. Rich didn't go up to see Steve. I lied about it. And later I decided to tell the truth, that's all. Mm -mm. You've got it backwards. Now, if you want my help, you've got to level with me. I am. No, you're not. You're afraid. Yeah. All right, now listen. Rich won't hurt you, I'll see to that. But you're in a spot, Mark, or a bad spot. And the truth is all that can help you. So now let's have it straight or I'm getting out of here and don't count on me for an alibi. All right, you win. What do you want to know? Why you switch stories. Well... When Steve was killed, I thought Rich might kill me, too. Oh, you thought Rich was the murderer? Well, naturally. So I escaped from you and, and called him. I swore I wouldn't say anything about his going to see Steve if he'd only leave me alone, and he promised. You accepted his promise? Well, what else could I do? Uh -huh. Oh, come on, Margot. Where are we going? I want to wrap up this case, and I'd like you to be alone. Well, what can I do? I mean, you can hold my hand, Angel. Let's go. Adventures of the Falcon. Only a few moments have passed since a limping Mike Waring took Margot by the hand and led her out of the apartment. His goal? To wrap up the case. Now we find Mike at the local steakhouse that serves as Foster's hangout. Oh, Foster. What name? Oh, Waring. Uh, Margot. Oh, sit down. Join us. Thanks, what name? Don't mind getting off this leg. I heard you were in the hospital. Yeah, Foster, overnight. Well, just what happened to you anyway? Uh, Whitney, I went over to the Hotel Randolph to keep an appointment with Foster here. When I got out of the cab, somebody was waiting for me in the alley next to the hotel. Mm -hmm. He plugged me, that's all. Well, you know who it was, Larry? Yeah, sure, Foster. And... Well, you mean you seen him? No, but I know him. Who? Same person who killed Cortez. Bullet was from the same gun. But do you know who killed Cortez? I think so, Foster. Who? Uh -huh. Well, you're the one who told me to go to the Hotel Randolph. Now, wait a minute. You don't hang this on me. All this I said. You know, I was in a taxi on my way over when you got it. I didn't get there till after the shooting. Now, if you don't believe me, you can check with the driver of my cab. I already have. Huh? I called a taxi company and found the driver who took you over. Well, what did he say? He said you arrived a few minutes after the shooting, so you must have been in this cab at the time of the shooting. Well, all right, then. Yeah, Foster, all right for you. Well, Mike, you've cleared Foster and you've cleared me. Cleared you, well, you were with me at my place when Steve was killed. Was I? Well, of course. What are you I uh, checked on that, too. The exact time of his death hasn't been determined. But we know the exact time. Because he phoned. Well, he was on the phone when he was shot. At least you say he was on the phone. All we have is your word for it, Margo. Well, but it's... Are you trying to say I'm lying? No. Well, you can't think I killed Steve. Oh, yes, I could. I almost did. But now that I know Whitney is the murderer, that lets you out, Margo. All right. 
Well, you don't mean that, Waring. Well, here comes Sergeant Corbett of the police. I asked him to meet me here. So, Whitney, you'll get a chance to see just exactly what I do mean. Hello, Corbett. Why did Whitney do it, Mike? Well, he was sure Cortez could beat Foster. So when the Boxing Commission forced the match, Whitney killed Cortez to get rid of the threat to Foster's title. If he get rich, we'd take the rap for it. But the match was a sellout. Think of the money Whitney lost by killing Steve. Ah, peanuts compared to hanging on to the title. There'd be other matches. And Foster had a good chance of whipping anyone but Cortez. I see. Well, why did Whitney try to kill you? Because I said I had an idea who the murderer was, and Whitney thought I meant him. Well, didn't you? No, not at the time. It was his shooting at me that put me straight. How? Oh. Well, the person who shot at me was waiting in the alley next to the Hotel Randolph. That meant he knew I was going there. Uh-huh. Well, Whitney was with Foster when Foster made the appointment to meet me at the Randolph. And they were the only ones who knew. So, it had to be one of them. And when the cab driver cleared Foster, that left Whitney. All right, Mike. Only one more question. What's that? You insisted on bringing me along when you nabbed Whitney. Why? I didn't help you. Well, Angel, suppose all I'd ask was for you to have dinner with me tonight. Would you have accepted? We hope you've enjoyed tonight's KNX Drama Hour. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Myrna. I'd love to see you tonight, Angel, but... Somebody took a shot at one of my clients, and he's afraid it may happen again. And you know, a thing like that can become pretty monotonous. So much so that my client could get bored to death. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the friendly target. And now, the case of the friendly target. It's late evening in New York when a sedan pulls up to the head of an alley and two men get out. Mitch, all clear. Let's go. Yeah, Connie. It's dark in this alley. Never mind, Mitch. Don't use the flashlight yet. We'll fight it. It's the first door. Ah, here we are. Where are you, Connie? I can't see. Right over here. Wait. Oh, yeah. Allison said it's a simple lock. Won't take a minute. I'll hold the light. Work fast so we won't have to have it on long. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, Connie. Now I... Hey... Where'd the other light come There's from? A spot on us. It's a trap. All right, you fellas. Put up your hands and don't make any other move. We have you covered. Yeah, we do. It's a trash barrel. Drop behind us. Okay. They get you, Mitch? No, I made it. Now what? No use, Connie. We've got both ends of the alley covered. Connie, they know your name. Yeah, it's a trap, all right. They were waiting for us. Where would I get that out? We've got to get out of here first. Come on out, both of you, with your hands up. Oh, we're coming after you. We'll have to make a run for it. You're crazy, Connie. They're all around us with guns. And with the spot on us, they see us, and we can't see them. I'm not letting them take me. Come on. Connie. Don't look, I tell you, run for the car. I have to go right through their fire. It's our only chance. I'll never make it. Okay, take your choice. Their guns or mine. What? That's my gun in your back. When I count three, you start running, or I pull the trigger. Oh, Connie, no. We've got 30 seconds, Connie. Call out your guns and come out reaching, or we start firing. That'll be all we need. You going, Mitch? No, no, Connie, I can't. One... You go, Connie. Leave me here. You're sure hit one of us alone. Our only chance is to run at the same time. Give him a split target. I can't, Connie. Please. Oh. 15 seconds, Connie. Three. Don't shoot, Connie. I'm going. Carney's escape.
escape just before he died from injuries sustained in the shooting. There. Just me, Allison. Sorry to wake you up. Connie. Yeah. You ought to sleep with your windows open, Allison. The fresh air's good for you. What, what do you want? Why didn't you come to the door? Windows offer less resistance. I want it in with no arguments. You will get it. Did something go wrong? Did something go wrong, you stooly? Stooly? What happened? Did they get the alarm fixed? We never had time to find out. They were waiting for us. Hey. The law. As if you didn't know. I didn't. Honestly, don't, don't. Let go. You're going to pay for this, don't. Allison. You're going to pay fast because your pals and cops are going to figure me to come here. But I couldn't run off without saying goodbye. No, no, you got it wrong, Connie. Believe me. It's no use, Allison. You were the one who steered me into the trap. I didn't know it was a trap, honest. Not much. I didn't. I don't have time to argue. Just let me explain. Let me explain. I got the dope from you. And I got it from somebody else. If there's a stoolie, it's, it, it's him, not me. Sure. That's the honest truth, so help me. I thought he was on the level. I didn't know about it. All right, you got it from somebody else. Who else? What are you going to do to him? Who else? Oh, oh. If I tell you, will you lay off me? The pants. Now, who is it? Before I... I... No. No. I'll talk. I'm listening. It's, it's Wagner. Frank Wagner. Yeah? Why didn't you tell me about this when you laid out the job? Wagner's been going straight. They didn't want nobody to know he was selling information. At least, that's what he told me. If this is just a stall, Alice... No, it isn't. It isn't. Get hold of Wagner. Make him talk. You'll find out. Sure, Allison. I intend to. Hello. Hello, operator. This is Mrs. Frank Wagner. I want an ambulance right away. And the police. What? Yes. Wagner. W-A-G-N-E-R. In the Horton Apartments. Hurry, please. My husband's just been shot. Yes? Hello. Mrs. Wagner, I'm Mike Waring. Oh, yes, Mr. Waring. Come in. Thanks. My husband asked me to send for you. He wants to see you. He was injured in a shooting about a month ago. You may have read about it. Yeah, I remember. Where is he? Right down this hall. He's still in bed. According to the paper, he had a close call. Yes, he certainly did. The bullet just missed his heart. For a while, the doctors didn't hold out much hope. Here we are. Frank, here's Mike Waring. Oh, yes. Come in, Waring. Come in. Hello, Wagner. So you're the falcon, huh? Does it show? Tell me you're quite the detective, Waring. And if I didn't, I'd get a new publicity agent. I want you to find out who shot me. Well, don't you know? No. Don't you have any enemies? Can't think of any. I'm a very likable character. <laughs> How does it happen? Middle of the night. I'm in bed, see? Doorbell rings. I open the door. Bang, like that. I'm in the hospital with a hole in my chest. Then you were face to face with the person who fired the shot. He had a flashlight shined at my face. I couldn't see a thing. That ain't... Yes, Frank? Where's Miss Willis? Well, what do you want? I'll get Where's Miss Willis? I let her go. You were worried about the expense. Yes, but I'm going to need a lot of nursing. I don't want I to... can handle it. Now, what do you want? That's the water. All right. I'll be right there. Good kid, that, Waring. Hate to do this to her, but... Still so doggone weak, I can't move out of this bed. Now, uh... What were we talking about? The shooting. Oh, yes. I didn't see who did it. Well, you're not giving much to go on. All right. I'll give you something. Well, it's a fellow named Artie Allison. I think he knows who did the shooting. What makes you think that? He called me in the hospital. The way he talked, I got the idea he knows something. But wants cash to spill it. All right, I'll get to Allison, see what he knows. Only one trouble. Price too high? No. We didn't get around to talking terms. Well? I sent the wife around to see Allison. He's disappeared. Oh, Great. But you'll find, Allison, and it's ten to one you'll get to the boy we're looking for. Okay, I'll go to work on it. Do that, Waring. And hurry, will you? Last time, he missed me by a fraction of an inch. Could be next time he'll hit dead center.
And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's half a day since Mike Waring went to work for Frank Wagner. Now in a small restaurant near Journal Square in Jersey City, Mike slips into a booth and smiles at the nervous little man sitting across the table from him. Hello, Allison. Hello. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh. How'd you know my name? I have your picture. I've been looking for you. How'd you find me? Very simple, Allison. You're not as lost as you think you are. Besides, I have my sources of information. What do you want with me? Just to find out if you're as good at answering questions as you are at asking them. What questions? Well, number one, what do you know about the Wagner shooting? Who says I know anything? Wagner. Oh. What's he say about me? He said you have information about the shooting for sale. He's lying. Why should he? All right. It's true, Wary. I do have information. Well, what do I do? Sit here while you argue it out with yourself? I know who tried to kill Wagner. Good. What'll it cost me? Are you working for Wagner? Uh-huh. I don't get it. What? Just what Wagner's after. To keep on living. He says I can tell you who shot at him. Is that it? Uh-huh. You say the same thing, so I'm waiting. Are you sure you're working for Wagner, Waring? Why not? How can I be sure? Uh, there's a phone called Wagner. All right, all right. You're working for Wagner. But most you doubt it, Allison. Nothing. I'll tell you who shot him. For free? For free. I want to get out of this. Okay, here's your chance to start getting. Who did the shooting? Ted Connie. Connie, huh? Why? Well, Connie got the idea Wagner put the law on him. Where'd he get that idea? I don't know. He accused me. When I convinced him it wasn't me, he said then it must be Wagner. That's all I know about. I see. That's why I ran out. When I heard Wagner was shot, I was sure Connie did it. Connie knew I was sure. So he might try to shut me up. All right, Allison, let's go. Go? Where? Home. But if Connie comes... I found you here. What makes you think Connie won't? Hey, that's a thought. Yeah, but I don't think you have to worry about him anyway, Allison. So you can go home. Connie's in enough trouble. Wouldn't be very smart of him to go looking for more. That's right, Waring. But what do I do if it turns out Connie isn't very smart? <laughs> So you found Allison. That was quick, Larry. Oh, not much to it, Wagner. And I checked with missing persons. They referred me to the robbery division. You mean the police knew where he was? Yeah, it seems he's been a stoolie for them. They used him on Carney, so when Carney escaped, they figured he might go gunning for Allison. They sent a man to cover Allison, and he followed them to Jersey City. And Allison never knew. Well, I didn't see any reason to tell him. But they knew where to find him if they wanted him. Mm-hmm. And uh, now? Now he's home again. Suppose he skips out again. No, I got a man watching his place this time. We may need him to clinch things against Carney. If we find Carney. Wonder where they got the idea I tipped him to the police. Hmm. From Allison, no doubt. Did you say Allison? Allison's a liar. I'm willing to bet he steered Carney to you. Who in turn came gunning for me. Could be. So now all we need is to find Carney. <laughs> That's what I like about working for you, Wagner. Just one goose chase after another. Well, where ain't? What's better for chasing geese than a falcon? Oh, Mrs. Wagner, come in. Thank you. Uh, so you left your patient alone. Huh? He'll be all right till I get back. If he needs anything, there's a phone right by the bed. Well, what can I do for you? I wanted to talk to you without Frank knowing. What about? Well, now that the nurse is gone, there's no one at our place except Frank and me. And he's completely helpless. He tried to walk today, but he only took two steps and fell. Mm-hmm. Well, suppose Connie comes back and tries to shoot Frank again. What could I do? I, I, I think that we ought to have a man around the place. Don't you? At least at night? Might be a good idea. I didn't say anything to Frank. I didn't want to worry him. Well, I'll see if I can get you someone. Someone? But I... What's the matter? Well, nothing. It's just that, well, you're already in the case, and we do have a guest room, and... I see. Tell me something, Mrs. Wagner. Why don't you call me Patty now that we know each other? Do we? Well, don't we? I feel as if I'd known you all my life. I feel as though I've known you all of 20 minutes. Well, if you come to our place, you'll get a chance to know me better. That, I believe. You don't like me, do you? 
Did I say that? You think I'm a heel because Frank's laid up? He told me you're a good gal. Don't take him too seriously, Mike. He talks for effect, too. Will you come? To protect Frank? Well, Connie might come back. You sure it's Connie? I thought that was better. Uh, no, not quite. There are a couple of things. What can you tell me about the shooting? Can you add anything to what your husband told me? I'm afraid not. I wasn't home that night. Oh? You're trying to suggest something. No, no. Oh, no. Uh, excuse me, Patty. Hello? Willie? This is Frank Wagner. Oh, yes, Wagner. What is it? Frank, what does he want? Allison just phoned Willie. He wanted you. Says he's contacting Connie. Knows where you can find him. Where? He wouldn't say over the phone. I think he wants cash. Mm, starting that routine again. All right, Wagner, I'll go right over. So long. What is it? We're going to visit Allison. We? Oui, I have to get back to Frank. He's alone. Maybe he's better off that way. Why do you say that? Never mind. But if we're going to get to know each other, we might as well start by sticking together now. <laughs> walk so fast? Something's going on that I don't like. Here we are. I had a man stationed across the street to see that Allison didn't leave, but he wasn't there when we came in. What does that mean? It could mean that Allison has left and my man's tailing him. But then why would Allison send for us? I hear somebody. Maybe we'll find out. Oh, are you wearing? So you're not tailing him. I thought I asked you to stay across the street, Lippert, unless Allison went out. He's out. Then what are you doing here? Why aren't you tailing him? This is where he's out. For keeps. What? I heard a shot. I came up to investigate. Somebody must have come in the back way. Allison's dead. You want to look for yourself? It's after dark already. I didn't intend to be gone this long. I hope Frank's all right. Do you? Believe it or not, Mike, I don't want anything to happen to him. Then I'd really feel guilty. <laughs> and stop smiling. Was I smiling? Well, after all, I'm the one who called the ambulance when Frank was shot. I saved his life. Don't forget that. You called the ambulance? Yes. Thought you weren't home that night. I got home a little after the shooting and found Frank on the floor. Oh, I see. Besides, if I meant any harm to Frank now, would I ask you to come along to protect him? Is that why you asked me? One of the reasons. Of course, I do have others. Yes, so I've noticed. I think we'd get along, Mike, once you get over your silly suspicions. And once you get the idea that all I'm going along for is to protect Frank. All right. Now, only one thing bothers me, Angel. What's that? Who's going to protect me? Hey, you'll have to forgive me, Wagner. I make a habit of coming through windows. Eccentricity of mine. Connie. Yeah, Connie. I've been holed up long enough. I figure it's time for me to blow. So I thought I'd better settle with you and Allison first. Too bad you're here all alone, isn't it? Well, I thought you'd be crazy enough to come here, Connie. Nobody did. That's how come I'm here. Barking up the wrong tree, pal. I had nothing to do with your brush with the law. Allison says different. Is Allison your idea of the soul of honesty? No, Wagner, but neither are you. You've got no call to suspect me except Allison says If so. you can prove he was lying... How am I going to do that? That's your problem. Get Allison. Bring him here, face to face. I've had enough of that kind of story, Wagner. I don't know what to say. So don't say anything. I'll settle with you just like I was sure. That draw, what can I lose but your life? Oh, Connie, wait. I've waited long and... Hey, somebody's coming. Must be Patty. This gun says you don't make a sound, Wagner. I'm wrong, Frank. Everything all right? Answer it. Tell her it is. Go ahead. Yes, Patty. Everything's all right. Good. We'll be right in. Wait. Oui. She's got somebody with her. Sounds like Come it. Come on, Mike. Yeah. We'll have to cover both of them. Remember, you not a son. I thought Mike wearing Frank, I thought it'd be a good idea. Hold it, both of you. Oh. Well, life's just full of little surprises. Get over next to Wagner's bed, you. Don't do it, Waring. He can't watch us both from where he is. Shut up, Wagner. Waring, now's your chance. Yeah. Hey! Oh! It's all right, Patty. Shot went into the wall. He's getting away! Now we'll see. He's going down the fire escape. I can't follow because he's got a clear shot at me in the window. Patty, only the door. Turn off the light. All right, Mike. That's better. Can you see him? Yeah, now the odds are my way. All right, mister, that's far enough. I've got a gun on you, so don't take another step. That's to show I'm not fooling. But stand still. The next won't be a warning. All right, don't shoot again. And drop your gun. Go ahead. Okay. You dropped it? I dropped something. I heard it. I don't know if it was a gun. 
It's too dark down there, but I'll go see. What if he's bluffing? And I'll call it. If he shoots me, we'll know he wasn't bluffing. Oh, see you later, Patty. I hope. <laughs> Back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's half a minute since Mike Waring ordered Ted Carney to surrender, and Carney went through the motions of obeying. Now Mike approaches Carney on the fire escape, hoping that Carney can neither fire nor escape. That's it, fella. Just stay that way until I pick this up. Wagner called you Waring. You must be the Falcon. Yeah, you must be Ted Carney. I've been looking for you. I understand you're a smart cookie, Waring. So? Maybe you'd be interested in a proposition. No, I don't sell out, Connie. So you're not smart. It depends on the point of view. I could make it worth your while. No, no dice. I don't need that kind of money. There's nothing I can say. You can't think of a thing. You'll be sorry about this, Wary. Maybe, Connie. But not half as sorry as you. Let's go. Yes, Sergeant, I'll hold him till you get here. Right, so long. Well, Carney, the police are on their way. I heard you ask for Sergeant Corbett a homicide. I didn't kill anybody. You tried to kill me. That's a lie, Wagner. And you did kill Alice. I didn't. Has Allison been killed? Yes, Wagner, he has. Well, I didn't do it. Tell me something, Carney. What? Why did you come here? I don't have to answer to you. All right, Wagner will. How about it, Wagner? It was just as you guessed, Wally. He said Allison told him that I was the one who put the law on. So he came to finish up what he started before. I didn't shoot you before. But you were going to shoot him this time. I was going to make him talk. What did you do from the moment you entered this room? Nothing. I was only here a minute when you came. All right, in that minute. Nothing. Wagner, he threatened me. All right, now let's have it from the beginning. From when he entered. But I'm lying here reading and I hear a crash. I look around. He's coming through the window. He has a gun. He tells me he's been holed up long enough. He's getting out now. But first he's settling with Allison and me. Oh, with Allison and you. That's what he said. I didn't get around to Allison. I came here first. But you said you were settling with Allison. Look, Wary, you got me. They're going to throw the book at me, but I didn't shoot Allison. They're not getting me for that. Oh, we'll see, Connie. Wagner, get up. What? Get up. Walk across the room. I can't. Just from the bed to the door and back. What's the idea? I want to see how strong you are. I can't walk at all without help. I'm too weak. Well, can you crawl? I don't know. Maybe. What are you trying to prove? Maybe you're stronger than you pretend. Why should he pretend? Makes a good alibi. Hey, that's an idea. Maybe he killed Allison. I'd have kind of Allison sick me on him. You're crazy. You think he crawled all the way to Allison? This is ridiculous. I haven't set foot out of this bed alone in weeks. Call him on a wary. Make him get up. Make him walk. Maybe I will, Connie. Provided you explain one thing. What's that? How come you knew Allison was shot? Huh? Well, you said... I said he was killed. I didn't say how. Oh. That's right, Larry. Well, I, uh, I just figured it was part of the same deal. Wagner was shot, so I figured if it was the same person both times, uh, Allison would be shot, too. Except you accused me. I didn't shoot myself. I didn't think about you doing it until what Waring said about maybe you could walk. That's pretty flimsy, Connie. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Wagner. I'll accept that explanation. But Waring... Yes, it's plausible enough. So that leaves you, Wagner. I promised Connie if he could explain, I'd ask you to walk. Now, go ahead, walk. I can't. All right, I won't argue about it. As long as you can walk into the courtroom. Are you serious about this, Mike? You don't really think that Frank... Killed Allison? Sure. You know, Wagner, you told me you're a friendly guy. I have an idea you're going to lose your popularity awfully sudden. After all, you can't shoot your friends and have them, too. hardly believe it, Mike. Why? You were already fed up with Frank. But I never thought he'd kill anyone. Unless well, Allison knew him better than you did. You see, in order to get off the spot with Carney, Allison blamed Frank for tipping the police to Carney. But Allison knew as soon as Frank heard about it, he'd try to get even. So Allison tried to kill him to protect himself. But he only wounded him instead. Mm-hmm. And Frank wanted revenge, so he hired me to find Allison for him. He knew Allison did the shooting, but he pretended not to know because he wanted to blame Carney so he could frame him for the murder. Well, what you on the right track. I was suspicious when Frank said Allison called him wanting to talk to me. He could have called me direct. Maybe Allison thought you were at our place. Yes, but when I wasn't, why didn't Allison call me direct? All right. 
That made you suspicious. But you certainly must have had something more than that to make you accuse her. Oh, I did. His lying about not being able to walk finished it. How did you know he was lying? Well, he said he couldn't walk at all, not even from his bed to the door. Well? Well, it was light when you left him. When you returned, it was dark. But Frank had been reading. The light was on in the room and the light switches by the door. I remembered because you turned the lights out of the door when I was chasing Carney. Right, so Frank could walk. Uh-huh. Now, that's all there is to it, Patty. Uh, huh? And now that Frank's in jail for murder, maybe you won't be so standoffish as far as I'm concerned. After all, I'm sure you'd like me once you've got to know me better. Yeah, could be. But I've always heard that what you don't know won't hurt you. So, Angel, I'm afraid part of my education will have to remain sadly neglected. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Grace. Well, I'm glad you called. I'll have to cancel out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some girl I know just brought me a very unusual proposition, and I'll be hanged if I touch it. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Talented Twins. And now, the case of the talented twins. It's late evening in New York, and the yellow convertible tears down Riverside Drive. At the wheel is George Alexander, who operates the car as though he owned the streets. Yeah, Mr. Alexander is a big operator. And the blonde alongside of him knows it. You warm enough, Masha? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Alexander. My friends call me George. Now, where do Oh, you passed it. Huh? You should have turned right on 76. What for? Well, that's where I live. Oh, I'm not taking you home, Marsha. Now, really, Mr. Alexander... George. The only reason I consented to go with you was because Mr. Kemp introduced us. You like singing at Mr. Kemp's club? Yes, of course. What's that got to do with it? It's got everything to do with sweethearts. I own the joint. Oh. Sure. Whose idea do you think it is for Kemp to give you a job in the first place? Uh, I didn't know. Well, any time you don't know something, Marsha... You just ask George. He's got all the answers. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. George, I'd like to go home. Really, I've got a splitting headache. That's okay. I have my boy fix you up something at my place. Why don't you sit a little closer? I'm perfectly comfortable over here. Nah, it's oh, too far away. Please, Mr. Alexander, you better look where you're going. <laughs> Come on, Masha, be sociable. What, will you want to sit there all look by... Look out! Huh? You're going to hit that man! You're not going to leave him lying there. Why not? He may be dead. We can't do him any good. Let me out. Get your hand up that door, Marsha. Oh. I'll let you go when I'm good and ready. And I'm not ready yet. Yes? I'm looking for a Michael Waring. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you the one they call the Falcon? When they can't think of anything worse. <laughs> come on in, Miss... Uh... Uh, Davis. Ruth Davis. Sit down. Thanks. Now, what can I do for you? I'm not quite sure. Did you happen to notice an item in this morning's paper about a man being killed in a hit-and-run accident last night? Yes. Yeah. That man was my father. Oh, I'm sorry. I want you to find the driver of that car. Why? Well, isn't that obvious? That man murdered my dad. He murdered him just as surely as if he used a gun. I don't care what it costs. Well, you should, Angel. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that anything you invest in a case like this would be money thrown down the sewer. As I recall, the police don't have a single lead. Oh, yes, they do. Th there was a man named Arthur Crane who witnessed the accident. He might know more than he's told them. What makes you think so? Call it a woman's intuition. You know, that's greatly overrated. Maybe, but there's no harm in trying. Mm -hmm. What did you say this witness's name was again? Arthur Crane. Arthur Crane. 
All right, Angel. I'll do what I can. Uh, here it is, Artie. Uh, Alexander George, real estate, 1792 Belmore. It's uh, Elwood 06742. wonder if that's the right Alexander. Well, it has to be. Didn't the license bureau tell you that was the name of the party who owned the car? Yep. Well, it's the only George Alexander in the book. All right, hand me the phone. Yeah. What's that number again? Uh, Elwood 06742. See who that is, man. You expecting anyone? No. Nope. Too early for Jack to drop around. Just a second. Yeah. You want the crane? No. Well, is he in? Who is it, Pete? Uh, it's some guy who wants to see you. How do you do, Mr. Crane? How do you do? My name is Mike Waring. I'm a private detective. Private detective? Yeah, at the moment I'm working for Ruth Davis. Who? Ruth Davis. She's the daughter of the man who was killed last night in that hit-and-run accident. Oh, oh, well, sit down, won't you? Pete, Thanks. see if we got any beer on ice. Yeah. Uh, don't bother, Mr. Uh, uh, Jordan. Pete Jordan, and it's no bother at all. Yeah, go on, Pete. Now, uh, what can I do for you, Waring? Well, according to the police blotter, you were the one who discovered Davis's body after the accident. That's right. I was coming home from a club date. Club date? Mm-hmm. I'm a musician. Oh. I play piano with a small combo around town. Mm -hmm. Well, go on. Well, just as I got out of the subway, I saw this guy Davis laying in the gutter. What time was that? Oh, it must have been around uh, quarter past three. First, I thought it was just some stew bum, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I saw that briefcase under his arm, then I realized it must have been an accident. Well, you couldn't have gotten there much after it happened. That's what the cops told me. You didn't notice any sign of a car around? Nope. Well, there couldn't have been too many cars out of that arm. This is very important to my client. Look, Waring, if there was any way I could possibly help you, I'd be glad to. Any driver who pulls a stunt like that ought to get it in the neck. Yeah, sure, but uh, you can't tell me any more than you have, huh? Not a thing. I'm sorry. I wish I could. Well, here's your beer, gents. I'm afraid I'll have to ask for a rain check, Jordan. You going already? Yeah, I got to. But uh, I'll leave my card. If you think of anything... Just leave it to me, Waring. If I think of anything, I'll know what to do. <laughs> Is Mr. George Alexander around? Who wants to know? My name is Artie Crane, but uh, I don't think it'll mean much to him. Just say I'd like to talk to him about a yellow Buick convertible. You what? Tell him I admire his taste in cars. You're nuts. Mr. Alexander doesn't own any convertible. That's not what the license bureau told me. Uh, maybe you better come in, Buster. Yeah, maybe I better. Sit down. I'll get Alexander. Hey, that's a nifty-looking piano he's got there. Mind if I try it? Just so you don't break it. That's very pretty, mister. Mm -hmm. You like? Yeah. What do you call it? I've got those gimme, gimme blues. A very original title. I'm a very original guy, Mr. Alexander. How so? Well, 99 guys out of 100 who know what I know would have spilled everything to the cops. But not you, huh? Mm-mm. Little Artie knows when to keep his mouth shut. For instance... Keep out of this, Vince. Go on, Crane. Well, for instance, last night I was coming home late and I saw a car bowl over some character who was crossing the street. Fortunately, I had enough presence of mind to copy down the license number. And you think this car belongs to me? Mm-hmm. You're wrong. Okay. I'm perfectly willing to leave it to Mike Waring. The Falcon? That's right. He's working for the daughter of the poor slob who got hit. He was around to see me this afternoon, wanted to know if I could help him. And you told him? Not a thing. I thought I could help you more. How much was worth? Why, you dirty little uh, punk. Let go. Should I let throw him out, George? Now calm yourself, Vince. Don't be so free with your hands, You Mr. shouldn't blame... Vince never liked back. Ah, well, that little pushing around is going to cost you another five, Alexander. Why, well, take it easy, Vince. You think the money was coming out of your pocket. So now you want $15,000, eh, Artie? Otherwise, I go straight to Waring's and from there to the cops. Well, I wouldn't want you to make such a trip on my account. Then you better get it up. Okay, Artie. You leave it to me. I'll take care of you. And when I get through, I bet you don't complain.
Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Artie Crane made his little call on Mr. Alexander. Now we find Mike making a call of his own. Only his isn't nearly as successful. So when you come right down to it, Mr. Waring, you've made no progress at all. Well, I could give you a big song and dance, Ruth. No, thanks. I'm in no mood for entertainment. You see, the truth of the matter is I'm stymied. The only potential witness we had was this musician, Artie Crane. And he couldn't tell you anything? No, not a single solitary... Th oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? That briefcase your father was carrying... That won't help you. They found it clear across the street where it was knocked by the car. Well, if it was knocked there by the... Say that again. This Artie Crane character told me he realized that it wasn't some drunk sleeping it off when he noticed the briefcase under your father's arm. Well, what's wrong with that? Hey, you just said it, Angel. The car sent that briefcase flying. If Crane saw it under your father's arm, it could only have been while your father was alive. Then Crane was lying. That he was. Well, you think... I think I ought to have another little talk with that boy. Oh. Let's see if we can get him up here. He, he won't suspect anything? Not if it's put to him the right way. Well, what are you telling me? Now, don't you worry, Ruth. I'll add lib something. Hello? Uh, hello, I'd like to speak to Artie Crane, please. Who wants him? Mike Waring. Well, Artie isn't here. Is this Pete Jordan? No, Pete isn't here either. Well, where is everybody? Unless there's been a change in plans, you might try the morgue. Hello, you still there, mister? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the top rock. Hey, wait a minute. Is this Sergeant Corbett? Sure is, Mike. All right, Corbett. Give it to me gently. Who did what to whom? Well, whom is your friend Artie Crane? The what was a half dozen slugs through his head. As far as the who is concerned, we got no idea. Have you, Mr. Waring? <laughs> Okay, I'm coming. Hello, Pete. Oh, hiya, Mr. Waring. Well, I drop around and redeem that rain check. Rain check? I asked for one the last time I was here. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you heard about Artie. Mm hmm. That his piano? Yeah. To think he'll never touch it again. Mm. Just how good was he on it? Oh, you can have the Duke and Count Basie. I'd have taken Artie any time. You a musician, too? Yeah, but I wasn't in his class. I, I, I used to sing a little. Oh. Well, how about an audition? What do you mean? Well, you never can tell, Pete. I may want to sponsor you. So let's hear how well you do in the voice department. Who killed Artie? Now, look, you can't talk to me like that. Come on, pigeon. Sing. Ah. Uh, I did. Ouch. You wouldn't try that. Your big brother was around. Let me go. Not before we have a solo. Now, who killed Artie? How should I know? You should if anyone would. Who had it in for him? No one. Everybody liked him. Uh -huh. So one of his admirers pumped six slugs into his face so even his own mother wouldn't recognize him. Incidentally, how did you? There wasn't a thing on the body. Well, I, I found him here. Might have been a visitor from Mars. Yeah, but he had a, a flag tattooed on his shoulder. A patriot, no less. Who was the hit-and-run driver who killed Davis? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do, Pete. Artie must have told you everything. He saw the car that killed Davis. No, no, he didn't. You know, you won't look so good singing without those dazzling white teeth. <laughs> well... It's a fellow named Alexander. Does this fellow have a first name? George. George? You mean Arthur tried to shake down George Alexander? You know him? Well enough to realize that Artie made a serious mistake trying it. Let's hope we all profit by his example. At your vent? Yeah. How you make out? Just look... All right, beautiful. Inside. Stop that. Inside. Hello, Marsha. You're not going to get away with this, Mr. Alexander. I told you my friends called me George. You want to be my friend, huh? No. You're fooling. Sit down, baby. You can't keep me here. You can't keep me here. You can't do this. You can't do that. Why don't you give that tongue a rest? All right, that's enough, Vince. <laughs> Marsha and me, we understand each other. Well, don't we, sweetheart? What do you want? I just want to make sure you didn't tell anybody about our little ride let. Get it, Vince. What about Marcia? What's the matter? Can a gentleman invite a lady up to his apartment? After all, we got you for a chaperone. All right, all right. Hold your horses, will you? Hello, is George Oh, I see he is. Wait a minute, Buster. Not so fast. It's okay, Vince. This is the Falcon. He's an old friend of mine. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I 
Oh, I beg your pardon. Am I interrupting something? No. Marsha, meet my query. How do you do? Well, generally I do all right, but I see George does even better. <laughs> Cute kid, eh? Yes, indeedy. Well, if you gentlemen are through discussing me, I'll say good night. Hold it, sister. Hmm. He's got a hypnotized. Vince, just thought maybe I want to tell us something. It's okay, Marsh. I'll give you a call later. All right, George. <laughs> you wish you were in my shoes, am I? Hardly, George. I wouldn't care to face a murder rap. I'm afraid I don't understand you, Wary. Well, it stems from the manslaughter charge. Manslaughter? Mm hmm. For killing Ralph Davis with your car last night. You know, Mr. D.A. could tell this story very effectively. It's got a wonderful moral, how one crime leads to another. Now, the opening scene would show you driving along. Get out. But... Well, you might let me finish, George. It's got great dramatic possibilities. You heard him. Get out. Who's this little Sir Echo? If you're not out of here by the time I count through... You mean you're not interested in how my little script ends? No. And you keep up like this, Mike. And you won't be around for the end. <laughs> But what happened after that? That's all there was, Ruth. You mean you know who killed my father and you let him go? I mean he let me go. He bought you off. No, no, no. Wait a minute, oh, Angel. I'm sure I was a fool not to see it before. Well, we'll see what the police think uh, about... sit down. Oh. You listen to me, Ruth. I walked out on Alexander because there wasn't a thing I could do. You know he ran over my father. Yeah, sure I do. But where's our evidence? There isn't any way I could tie it to him. The only witness was murdered. Well... Well, what? You know he murdered Arthur Crane. Can you prove that? Well, it stands to reason... Look, Angel, you can build as good a case against several other people. Uh, who, for example? Well, for example, you. What? Sure. You knew Artie Crane could identify the man who killed your father. And when he refused to give you any information, you murdered him. That's the most ridiculous piece of... Yes? Well... That's right. My name's Marsha West. I don't know if you remember me. Oh, you underestimate your charms, Marsha. You're the kind of a girl my kind of man could never forget. Well, I'd like to talk to you. Well, what would be the point? I thought you were a close friend of Alexander's. Well, I was in his car last night. You what? Yes, he was taking me home when he killed that man. Where are you now? At the place where I work. It's called the TikTok Club. When can I expect you? Just open your door, Angel. I'm practically there now. <laughs> Come on, you creep. Snap into it. We haven't got all night. The show goes on in a few... Yeah, what do you want, mister? Where's Marshall West's dressing room? The first one on your left. This one here? Yeah, that's right. I don't keep her too long. She's on in ten minutes. Come on, girls. Don't stand. Marsha? Marsha? She ain't here, Waring. What? No, just stay like you are, Morgan. Lock the door, Vince. All right. Where is she, George? Where is Sue? Marsha. She called me from here not more than 15 minutes ago. You say, Vince? Was it uh, that old hag with the mop? And you boys ought to try television. That's a great act you've got there. Well, I'm glad you like it. What did Marsha tell you on the phone? Who? Don't be smart. And I just wanted to show you that two could play that game. What'd you tell him? Enough. You know, I wouldn't need much excuse to paste you one right now, Buster, so don't tempt me. What do you say, Mike? I say you boys aren't very smart. There are a dozen people out there. And they all work for me. So start talking, pal. Oh, why, you... Careful, chum. Now, why you want to knock him down for Vince? <laughs> you only got to pick him up again. That's all right, Alex. I'm in very good shape. I can keep this up all night. <laughs> Sleeping beauty. I didn't even have to kiss you to wake you up, huh? Yeah, this isn't the Princess Palace. It's Bellevue Hospital. Uh, no kidding. Okay, Mike, who slugged you? First, I want to know where you found me, Sergeant. On West 8th Street. Well, how did I get down there? I can tell you one thing. I don't think you made it on foot. Uh, someone must have given me a lift. Oh? A character named Vince, working at the behest of George Alexander. What do they want to do that for? Because Alexander was the one who drove the car that killed Ralph Davis last night. Last night? Well, isn't it Sunday? Where have you been? Don't bother answering, I know. All right, all right. What day is it? Monday. Mon... 
Holy smoke. Where's Marsha? Who? Marsha West. She was in the car when Alexander killed Davis. Did she tell you that? Yes, and I wouldn't be surprised if she knew all about the Artie Crane killing, too. Is that tied up with this? Definitely. You see, Crane tried to blackmail Alexander, and he... Not so fast. Can you prove that? No, I can't hear, Corbett. So let's go where I can. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring set out with Sergeant Corbett to try to tie the case together. Their destination, the apartment of George Alexander. You're a pretty sick man, Waring. You don't know what you're saying. No, it's no use, George. We've got all the evidence we need. Right, Sergeant? Right. So why don't I hear from the district attorney? You will, shortly. You're still bluffing, Mike. Admit it. All right, then how do I know you paid off to Artie Crane? You know? Yes, and I can prove it. How about that, Mr. Alexander? Well, you see, it's like this, Sergeant. It was no shakedown. I gave Artie the money. Oh, because you were impressed by his musical talents and wanted to see him further his career? Why, Mike, you take the words right out of my mouth. Oh, no. Something wrong? You don't think the DA will buy that? Why not? If it's okay for me to help young ladies interested in musical careers, why not young men? Sounds logical. Oh, come on, Corbett, be smart. You don't believe that? I didn't say it did. I just said it sounded logical. That's all I ask. Where's Vince? Why? I want to talk to him. You're going to have a long wait. Vince leave town Friday night. Friday? Yeah. Uh -huh. I suppose that was his double who bounced me around backstage at the TikTok club on Saturday. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, sure. Next, you'll say you never heard of a girl named Marsha West. Of course I have. Oh, sweetheart. You call me, George? Marsha. Is this the girl you mean? All right, never mind the act, George. Listen, Marsha, this is Sergeant Corbett. I want you to tell him everything. Everything? Yes, beginning with your call to me on Saturday night. My call to you? Don't you remember? I don't see how I could be expected to, Mr. Waring, seeing this is the first time we've met. What? But it's been a real pleasure. Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> You know, Mike, maybe we ought to go back to the hospital. It's not a bad place. They got a couple of good-looking nurses there. Okay, okay, so I'm not, Sergeant. But just humor me a couple of minutes more. I still don't see what you're going to accomplish with Pete Jordan. I tell you, he knows that Artie Crane went to see Alexander. That still don't prove anything. Crane could have gone to see Alexander for a million reasons. Well, suppose Pete's willing to swear that he... Yeah? Well, if it isn't the gay troubadour. Hello, Pete, remember me? Now, look, Waring, I'm busy. Yeah, I... sure you are. This won't take much of your time. Did Artie Crane tell you he saw the car that killed Ralph Davis in that accident? Well, uh... Well, didn't he? Yeah. Get your coat, Jordan. We're going downtown. Uh, now, don't rush him, Sergeant. You might break the spell. As long as Pete's in the mood for singing, maybe he'll be willing to croon you something else. I told you everything I know. Not quite. There's one song you forgot. The one that goes, I killed my best friend and am I sorry. What are you talking about? The murder of Artie Crane. You know enough about that to give us a complete chorus. So start singing, pigeon. <laughs> Don't girls, that's the whole story. Alexander goes up for manslaughter and Pete Jordan for murder. Any questions? I have one, Mike. Oh, so have I. Uh, I think Marshall's first, Ruth. All right, go on, Marsha. Well, first, I think I owe you an explanation. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Alexander made me say I didn't know you. He and Vince caught me phoning you that night. Yes, I figured as much. I was afraid of what he might do, not only to me, but to you. Well. I thought she had a question to ask. Oh, well, all I wanted to know is what made you suspect Pete Jordan. Very simple thing, Angel. As you recall, when the police found Artie, there was nothing on him. So? So the question arises, Ruth, what happened to the hush money Alexander paid him? I don't get it. I pulled one bluff on Alexander that worked. The only reason he admitted giving money to Artie was that he thought I could prove he did. And you couldn't? No, because there was no money found on the body. And it stood to reason that Alexander and Vince didn't remove it. Otherwise, they would have known I was bluffing. 
So I figured maybe this was just a plain, everyday murder for money. And once you realized that, it was just a matter of picking out the only party who had the opportunity. That's right. Matt gave me Pete Jordan. But I'll tell you one thing this business taught me. What? Never take a case where two beautiful women are involved. Makes for complications. <laughs> How so? Well, it's too much of a good thing. You know the old saying, two's company, three's a crowd. He's got a point there, Ruth. He certainly has. No, 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 don't fight. I'm sure we can settle this peaceably. I'm sure we can. That's the spirit. Now, how are we going to work it? That's easy. Mm -hmm. Good, Good night, night, Mr. Waring. Mr. Waring.